It's nonsense. It's Zero nonsense. thought. Copy pasta. Reddit. Twitter. Nothingness. It's like nonsense. Like if you asked, if you could, like truth serum, and you were like, how long did you think w- before you formulated their opinion? They say two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. Yeah. And I've spent two months of my life thinking yeah. about this all day, every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. We're so dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jessica Sam. And I'm Veritas. Wow. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. <laughs> I'm good. Is that your mouse or my mouse on your microphone? It's your mouse. It's okay. I thought it was mine. Uh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> oh, how, how you been, man? How's your week? I'm just, I'm casually unwrapping myself with my audio cable. Sorry, I was oh. engaging in my own personal sort of S&M. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, things, things, things have been good. I've been playing a lot of uh, Arena. I've been going hard on Arena. I've been uh, seeing that. I've been seeing that. Having fun. Uh, lots of, lots of misery. Well, of but course, the fun kind of misery, not like the yeah, misery kind of misery. at least enough. Tarkov's always been a little bit of that, right? Even at its best, but at least it's enough that, like, at the end of the day, you feel like you had fun. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's good. I will say, I haven't obviously because of the wipe. I haven't been. Um, I just haven't seen a lot of arena stuff, but like. Just lurking in your chat for 10 seconds before the podcast started, seeing you, I assume you are on an alt account, seeing you on that M4 kit, I you shot for one second and I got hard at how good the recoil was. Like, I just haven't seen a lot of those builds, you know what I mean? And no, no real human would ever build that in Tarkov, so I just haven't seen some of those builds. And dude, I was like... Damn. So I still haven't played Arena with the new recoil, but just seeing that one clip of that one kit, because that's such a classic example of like, if you were to build a gun to showcase how bad the old recoil system is, you take a stock M4, put a 100 round mag in it, and just decant it sight, and you'd be like, shoot this. And you'd be like, <laughs> yeah. So to see you just like beam with it, dude, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only downside with it, though, is, um, is a bunch of the guns suffer from the same issue, which is they have like the blast mitigation device. Like, oh kind of like yeah, compensated stuff that just amplifies. So like, what yeah. it feels like to shoot it. First of all, it sh- it's got a hundred round mags of like the LLRN PLN yeah. RRLLP yep, whatever. Yep which has 11 pen and <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, 70 or 80 damage or whatever. Um, it has enough bouncy, enough yeah. of a bounce. It's not a laser beam. No, it no, no, no. It can be tough, you know, to yeah. control sometimes. Um, but the muzzle flash with every bullet, it's almost like I see it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I'm playing the game at 60 FPS, but I'm blinded for every it's odd like, frame. It's like a really fast version of at the doctor. Do you like this one or this one? This one or yeah. this one? This one. And every other frame is just flash. And then every other frame is like... The, your, and every the, other frame you get peppered with the same bullet from the opposing M4 yeah. guy shooting you like this that hits you this in the one, chest and one? makes your vision go pure yeah. blur. So it's just... <laughs> And then one of you falls over to an RSAS guy across the map, just like watching you, like on fucking camera. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But so I, I bought a I bought an account today because um, I wanted to test out uh, kind of the new oh, like restarting. Yeah, well, yeah, to see because so I'm I'm making a video. I wasn't going to, wasn't planning on it, but I, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm back in Tarkov right land. when he thought I, he was out. <laughs> yeah, like, I see, I see the forest for the trees. <laughs> I see the solution. I see yeah, the yeah, answer. Yeah. And uh, there's just so much garbage conversation around matchmaking, progression, yeah, a whole bunch yeah, of stuff. It's yeah. the same 
it's the same like well why don't they just you know ban yeah. the cheaters as like a solution the most obvious like ugh. yeah so and i'm sick of explaining it a billion times so i'm like all right fine i'm gonna fucking make a video classic yeah 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 and i got halfway through making it and realized like i really have i have one specific pathway of progression through arena yeah um, that showcases a shit ton of problematic issues okay but it still only tells a small fraction of the story okay you know because like i started on you know late into day one grinded yep. you know i didn't i i, I grinded like 80 percent as much as the other streamers that went hard on yeah Arena, yeah but still 98 percent more than literally all like the entire population so i got out ahead with the progression of unlocking the kits yeah um and while doing that raised you know my my arp which is your rating arena rating points which i just refer to as elo which is like the chess rating i just call it elo because it's fucking easier yeah. um your default elo is 1500 i got up to approaching <laughs> 3000 yeah um and a few times in there, I think we were we were playing together on like day three. Remember, I yep. decided to switch it up. Yeah. I went over to Marksman, Marksman, yeah, and then we were just facing like alternating between like Landmarks team and then like Rengar's team and then like Smitty's. It was just like for six hours, I yeah. didn't get any kills. Cut my KD in half, you know. Like yep. so, I, I experienced that, and then I went and leveled up a couple other kits. Got the Val kit. You know, whatever started to I got the G twenty eight, which is like another. Oh really yeah, kit. and both of those are like super viable. Yeah, um, with their own, you know, minor frustrations. But then again, like all of the kits have something. Yeah, have something that's, which you know people would say <laughs> was balanced, but you can have balance without being annoying. And, and I think a lot of the like the Val, I can't one v three because it jams before the second magazine. Yeah. yeah, 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 so yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's a really frustrating thing, and that like. If yeah. I just had an MPX with 50 round mags of PVP, I could like 1v3. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh so then they went and tweaked the matchmaking. Because before it was just based on oh, your Elo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they made the adjustment that the community wanted them to make. This was the why don't they just do X? Yeah. And then they went and did X. And like I had predicted. Yeah. It would be insufficient. Where basically now, so what everybody wanted was for them to require you choose your gear before queuing. Yeah. And then use gear score to help match. And then use gear score to help matchmaking. And that was like, why don't they just do that? Um, and so they didn't do that because that would actually change yeah. a lot. Because First of all, like you choose your gear based on the map you're playing. You don't know what map you're playing until the queue tells yes. you. Yeah, it's all. Um, yep. So if they were to do that, they'd be fucking kneecapping the matchmaking because then you'd say, I want to progress marksman. So I'm only going to queue on bowl and bowl or sawmill. sawmill. Yeah. Um, whereas normally you're like, I've got two kits I could work on. So I'm just going to queue all the maps and I'll get into it. And that makes matchmaking better because yep. there's more people. You want as many people in the queue as possible yeah. so that everybody gets in, you know, whatever. Um, and there's a bunch of other issues that I'm going to talk about in the video. Uh, but so they didn't do that. What they did was effectively they, they were vague about it. But a, a basically they were going to take into consideration like your recent gear. That yeah. You've used, from the past which, few rounds of arena. Someone yeah. says like, you know, some people say the last game, some people say the last three, some people say the last five or ten. You know, everybody hits like a number where they're like, dude, it was seven. Everything changed <laughs> as if like as if matchmaking is so consistent. Yeah, that you yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Um, and lo and behold, it's exactly like it was before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because what because what we have right now is. We've got people with. 2,000, 3,000 point differences in their ELO queued together. One of them is a late, a high ELO guy who's ra like ranking up a new class. A new Another class. one is a mid tier guy who's on a the eighth, the last tier class. And then there's a newbie with them. Yeah. And the game's like, 
I don't know, maybe, I don't know what it does, but for all intents and purposes, it seems indistinguishable from just, like, averaging it. So what you end up with is, like, a Tier 3 guy who can't compete yeah. with the other Tier 4 guy and the Tier 6 guy Yeah. put against a team of Tier 5s. Yeah. So um, it's like, it used to be you would have people, like, if you... It, Part of the frustration was it used to be you'd have people around your skill level, but with much higher gear. And now in addition to that, you can just also get into a situation where you have people at your same gear at a much higher skill level. <laughs> I don't see. I don't know. Like because if someone's got 2000 ARP and they're working on a new kit and then this person just unlocked this kit and he's been working on it, the gear score averages out. And then it's yeah, that's interesting. I was going to ask how that's been feeling. It's it's really kind of complicated because <laughs> what you have is is the ARP is a fundamentally flawed number for a bunch of different reasons. So the rating isn't fair or accurate yes. on one hand. Yeah. And then the gear score is also not really properly an accurate representation. There are two gears that have MPs of six hundred. Yeah. That are drastically different. Like drastically different. Like the 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 last tier class has like the SVT. Yeah, which is like a stick gun. But if you have like a, a a thick helmet with no face shield and a thick armor and a SVT, which is just iron sights. Yeah. Competing against a long foul with like an Eoteca laser. Yeah. M62. Yeah. Grenades, a helmet, ear, headphones like it, they're not the same power level. No. Yeah. Um. So. And again, when you have a when you can group people up that just have a massive range, that a massive range of two values that don't accurately represent anything, what you end up with is a fucking. It's just it, it might as well be randomized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Now the experience I had when they made this new change, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna level up a new kit at like 2,800 ARP. This was my third one. Um, okay. So, I, so I've done three. I've gotten to like the second to last tier on yeah. marksman and, and scout. on scout and then i was started to level up assault and got to like the fourth tier um and then on the new account i'm on cqb the one with the ultimate gotcha. okay okay um, because i assume the new players are going to come in and hear that's op and they're all going to choose that so i wanted to see what that was like yeah what's that experience and like? what and what ended up happening <laughs> was um so there's like a letter a letter grade system starting with d so there's d oh d yeah plus, yeah 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 d, d plus and they're basically each one of them is like a thousand elo yeah so one two three four five six until you get up to like s rank yeah um so and what's really interesting is within even d plus like a thousand elo range okay what i've noticed and the same exists in c except just shift it up a little yeah is that you have people who are playing on with a trackball on a laptop like remote <laughs> pc into their work pc to like play tarkov and it's their first shooter ever yeah against people who are like above average yeah that are that are all d plus yep so it's already inherently fucked yeah 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 Mixing yeah with the people who it's their day one yeah they're all 1500 arp they're all d plus um so what ended up happening was when i when i downshifted to grab a new kit um the after a couple games there was a clear pattern of i'm c rated okay on like a tier three kit and i am facing Five man squads of D pluses, all with Alton's wristies, Gen gotcha. fours. So it's like you're gonna, we're gonna put you with worse people with better gear, and they're unkillable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're, they're potatoes, but I have a jank ass gun with a fucked up sight. Yep. In the muzzle flash and whatever, and they have just like guns that don't have any recoil. Yeah. With nice clear EOTEX and an AP ammo, and it's. And lasers and grenades yep. and contacts. Yeah. You know? So it's yeah. like, and that sucks, dude. It yeah. sucks to lose to people who you know you're better than. And then it's a clear gear diff. That continues the cycle of you being improperly rated, 
right? Like you, because, I start downgrading. Yeah, because you start downgrading, and then and then you continue. Like let's say for you dipped down back into D plus. Now you're that guy where like your skill level is way above average, and you might on your way down. You're down ranking your elo because you're losing 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 then you finally get enough xp and you unlock the kit you're going for now you're d plus with the kit you were going for and you're just slaying but the system sees you as d plus because once again like we said there's no unranked there's no place for you to unlock any of those kits and it's just really easy to come up with these situations and to see how that happens where like if you're forced to play with guns that aren't really good against other people that have really good gear you're going to be like improperly deflating your own rank because there's no good place to then get that XP. Yeah, that's fascinating. Like, like, and and it also comes down to like <clears throat> lower skilled players play fucking weird and unpredictable in weird ways and anybody who's ever played like yeah, like even casual competitive CS or any of those types of games will know um, playing against a bunch of silvers, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, like yeah. Why are they all crawling on their stomachs? Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, and, and what what makes me feel? Because I start to feel like insane when there was a, there was a couple games today where I went like two and four against yeah. like people who I know had their monitors off. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. But they had like the MP9 with a nice dot shooting AP, and there's no recoil. Yeah. Um, and I'm like struggling with a no stock, no whatever AK with yeah. iron sights. Yeah. Um, or even the dot that, that like blocks a third of the fucking screen yep. while you're, um, because a bunch of the dudes that are like top 10, top five, like I, like, um, there's a guy, Treyx, uh, Degeki and a few other people that like, they're probably like three, four on the leaderboard. Oh, damn. Um, like the top rated folks. I played with like them and a few other people who are like, you know, they're like serious. They've got fucking calms, call outs, everything. Yeah, like, yeah. Just really, you know, they're, they're not like, it's not like it's fucking Virtus Pro or anything. For sure, but, for sure. But they're just taking but, it seriously and that's like, how they enjoy it. Yeah. But like we beat some of those teams. Yeah. Like with them. And I was, I think there were two games I top fragged. And one of the games I went like four and four against them. When I was on my tier three, the the eight the oh, VPO yeah, yeah. with PS ammo, yeah, against that game actually was against. Um, I think it might have been the VP. They're like Russian, so they they had like two hundred fucking ping. Yeah, yeah, mega aggressive. They had fucking strats and like all that shit, and we ended up winning. And it was like, it's so crazy how. With with good gear, I can compete. Uh, they're better than me by all means. For sure, yeah. But I can compete with some of the best players in the world and hold my own. And then yet, you give me a tier two kit against a tier yeah. four bot, and I yeah, I go negative. Yeah. It just goes to show you how much the fucking gear. It's like driving a <sighs> For car sure. w where mm. there's no steering wheel. Yeah. How how good how good are you, is is Ken Block gonna race? the Subaru if he has to hold on to the steering wheel shaft and shift you know yeah, like yeah yeah fuck? yeah yeah it just it, the, the 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 comp the complexity of Tarkov's mechanics and all that kind of stuff far surpasses the complexity uh, not of games like CS but of the gear of games like CS right like it's it's those are much more binary and like, you know, you take a pistol, you, you know, you're giving up range and damage, but you it's cheaper, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And there's only so many options there, you know, and then with those limited, sometimes limiting is good, right? Because then with those limited options and five players, the strategies can get compound and get complicated. You do this, I'll do this, we're going to save this and the other. But then when you take Tarkov's level of complexity and armor and ammo and recoil and everything, and it's just like, it's too... It's that seems nearly impossible with Tarkov system to like properly balance. You know what I mean? Like a, a progression system. I feel like you could balance the end. Have, right? I, have I told you my idea? No. I can spoil it. I can spoil what's going to. I don't mind. because well, Yeah. I've got what's the TLDR? Give me the idea. And again, this I have a million. All the nuanced considerations. Yeah. All yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Which will be the video. Yeah. 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 Um, But. 
here is an example because there's an infinite number yes. of potential elegant solutions. Here's one way that I think could solve so many problems and improve a ton of other systems. Okay. So imagine the, the same tree we have now, but imagine it's not like it wouldn't be necessarily in order of like tier one, two, three, four. It wouldn't have to be in order. Imagine it could just be random. Okay. It could be themed, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, and then imagine, imagine like right now we have basically kind of like six tiers, right? Like, like 100 to 699, you know, like, yeah, let's just say tier one is anything with a one at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Imagine we have that. Imagine that I'm trying to figure out the best order because there's multiple pieces. Uh, imagine if the ARP was more like ELO in that it wasn't like if you are the best yeah. in the world and you play a bot and you win, you don't go plus 25. Yeah. You shouldn't play against them at all, really. But if you have one dude on your team that's a god and, and he goes 30 and 0 and every, nobody else gets a kill. Yeah. Why would they all go up plus 25 and the other team goes down plus yeah, minus 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine like an actual real kind of good ELO. Yep. All the matchmaking is based solely on ELO. So skill-based okay. matchmaking there. Now imagine when b before every round, there's a 10-second time period where A, you can talk to your teammates. Okay. B, you can, so if you have strats, if you get to apologize for team killing, you got, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, B, you can move around anything you need to, whether it's dots, yeah. sights, yeah, lasers, yeah, yeah, yeah. meds, binds, get that all out of the way. So you don't have to worry about animations because just having the animations fucks everything up. Yeah. Um, while the timer's going down. Um, and then three, you get to choose what kit you want for that round. Now, oh, interesting for that round. And again, this is arbitrary. There's a number of ways you could tweak it, but here's just a for instance. Imagine yeah. if if everybody, every account starts off with 12 default presets. Okay. Imagine they're all, let's just say they're free. Okay. Two tier one, two tier two, two tier three, two tier four, two tier five, and two tier six. Okay. And imagine they're like, okay they're not like aids to use like yeah. they're just okay right yeah <laughs> um round one you get to choose tier one kit from the ones you have available round two oh you get to choose yeah tier two kit. round three tier three round four round five and then from round six to the end of the game up to round nine or yeah, whatever yeah and you just this, then you get to choose it's unlimited you can choose whatever you want maybe if you're really good and you're you want to fuck with them you Tier one the whole time. If yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but so then imagine you could specify like these are my auto picks. I'm always going to use these. These is what I'm going to use. So during that period of time, you can you can just autopilot, talk to your teammates, move yeah, stuff yeah. around, whatever you got to do. But so that the result of that is similar to like the CS:GO like buy yeah. phase in that you have a pistol round on the first round. The second round is like an SMG round. Yeah, yeah. The round after that is like rifles and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Which, so the, what, that solves a few different things. Um, And before I, before I say what all of the things it solves, um, the, so you earn XP in the game based on performance, you win, whatever. Yeah. And that XP Imagine that XP is a currency and you can just go to wherever in the tree and oh, unlock whatever you want. Yeah. So imagine you're like, I've been struggling with, I don't like this pistol kit I have. What's a cool pistol kit? You look at the tree, you look at all, oh, yeah. I really like that one. You it's just go unlock that one. Incentive to spend money on even the, the, the XP, you spend the XP on even lower tier kits. Because if you're like, man, I always go zero on round one round two i'm comfortable round three uncomfortable and i'm working on a nice round five kit but in the meantime i'm gonna buy this other pistol kit i really don't go well round one with this tier one kit yeah that's yeah and, and now your progression because right now the problem is you play on one thing for so so <laughs> I, I i have the i have the breakdown in order to get a, a tier two kit um is twenty thousand xp so assume right now 
it's about 20 minutes for a game yeah. from cue to the end. 20 yeah. minutes for a match. If you are average 50% win rate, average performance, about 6,000 XP. It takes an hour to get your first tier two kit, three hours to get tier tier three, um, eight hours yeah. on, to play on your tier three that you hate to get your tier four, yep. 16 hours to get your tier five, 16 hours of gameplay on a kit you hate that you're forced to use every round, every game, yeah. 22 hours to get a 60, uh, the tier six kit. Yeah. 22 hours with a, a kit you might hate just to get another kit that might be better. Whereas yeah. now, no matter what you do, you're not like your kit doesn't determine what you're making yeah. progress on. It's yeah. just progress. Yeah. You're just getting progress. And then you get to decide where you're strong, where you're weak, what you want to try, what you want to avoid. Yeah. That'd be fascinating. And, and, and it, because it, it's, yeah, it's similar to the buy phase, but you're not actually spending the currency. You're not actually like, um, um, you're not losing anything when you die. It's just you're restricted to only tier one. So like you said, you could do tier one kits all the way through if you wanted a mess. So basically each round unlocks the next tier of available. If if you're if you really don't like your tier two kits and you just want to use your tier ones, you can do that in round two. That'd be super interesting. I feel like and yeah, and it would be gear diversity. It, it would it does it removes the feeling bad of just dying to you know what was it to penis man's you know grenade yep. every round or to this guy's alton every round you know what i mean at least and it, it about it, it so it, it it adds diversity yeah it also creates a much more complicated meta yeah and strategy whereas like i want to see i've been seeing degeki and all these crazy good players running around with the wrist t foul yeah and that's cool and all i want to see them rock a pistol against yeah. other good players with or a an pistol. sks in round two or, yeah right? like so you have to be good with a diverse amount of yeah. gear which is also really good um because right now and i'll i'll i have a little snippet from nikita that i'll play after this and then we can move on to the, the normal tarkov stuff no yeah um but like it that makes you a more well-rounded player in the game. Yes. Um, you get so much more experience with stuff, and inherently it inherently balances everything. This this yeah. whole idea that you have to you have to choose your gear before you match make, it's so restricting. Yeah. And still you you have nine rounds where you, you you are using the same thing against people using the same thing. Yeah. If you sometimes you choose the wrong thing against the wrong people and you the game is over. Yeah. And that's what I like about that, especially for ranked, because like the whole idea of rank is like see how you stack up. Are you a uh, are you a player that can be put in multiple situations in Excel? And I like the uh, it also solves this wasn't a problem, but this was feedback a lot of people gave, which is I wish I could choose a different kit every round or people were like, mm -hmm. that might be OP. But if I could get one switch, because once again, the like the, the types of things you want to encourage in a game like this is, you know, what we just talked about, which is like gear diversity, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be, it can be, it would be pretty easy to say that even if it's fun, it's probably not intended. If like two months from now, every single arena player C, C rank and up was just using the wrist T hex grid kit. Like even if those people were having fun, you could probably reasonably say that probably wasn't intended for the entire video game to funnel to one kit. So gear yep. diversity is a good thing. And then also... Um, the ability to just play uh, or respond like strategy. That's another good thing you would want, right? Is, is the ability to give the player the agency to respond. Oh, they're, they're at tier three and tier four. They've been picking a lot of long range stuff. Yeah, this you, guy always snipes you on this and map, you swap to marksman. I'll play forward with my, like, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't have to do that. You wouldn't even necessarily have to do that to be proficient, but giving the player the ability and agency to make those uh, decisions, especially if you're squad, especially if you're playing in a, in a ranked environment where you're really trying to be good, that's, that could only be a good thing, right? Yeah. And, and, and this doesn't require as much as I think if you would start from scratch and make a, a really cool customization system where you could build custom kits with points or buy stuff and, you know, like, that's all cool and all, but it it's that would require so much changes that it would just it's not even worth. Yeah, that's a whereas hard this, thing to recommend. Whereas this is like we already have the like doom, 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 like fucking eight second stinger thing that pops yes. up with the scoreboard. Like imagine if that was over in half the time, 
or the scoreboard was persistent yeah. during that thing and you just had the currents. We already have a pop up that you choose your kit at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Just have like a version of that pop up at the Each beginning round. of the round. Yeah. 90% of the time, you're probably going to be running the same thing. You're enjoying this yeah. progression. So you can just have it default so that you don't have to choose it every round and you can just move stuff around if you need yeah. or take a 10 second breather before the next round. Yeah. Clear your head. It's just a win, 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 win. Yeah. And it uses no crazy new UI. It doesn't it, yeah. you keep the same tree. That's all what's that's what's really nice about the idea is that like it's just modified versions of existing assets and existing UI. It's not like, hey, we need to I know your game is six weeks old. We need to go back to the drawing board here. It's like, no, if you just yeah. shuffle some things around, you're so close. And then I I hadn't considered this, but what Degeki is saying. So I was talking about I, I had said in my analogy. Even if you're having fun and enjoying it, it probably wouldn't be good if everyone was running the same kit. Gear diversity is good. Not only is it just that maybe he's not enjoying it, but he's actually very aggressively incentivized to not use gear diversity. Because like he, I just hadn't even considered that. If I stand to lose my top eight on the leaderboard if I use anything else. And that's absolutely true. If man, If man is literally... By every definition, doing everything right. He's a very good player. He's top 10 on the leaderboard. He's crushing it. The reward for that is, well, you can't ever do anything different, Lamau. Because if he goes in, if he's probably in B lobbies at this point. No, A he, lobbies. We, we were he, in A lobbies. That's insane. So if you guys, if he's in A lobbies and he goes, well, I want to try assault and I've got a no butt stock iron sight canted thing with no optic on it, EKO 366AK. It's GG's for his rank, right? And so it's yeah. like, it feels like, once again, we're not trying to like just shit on BSG. It's just like, what is the game incentivizing the player to do? What is it de-incentivizing the player to do? Is the game rewarding you for being good at the game? Or is the game <laughs> kind of hurting you for being good at the game? And that's just a fascinating perspective because I'm not top 10 on the leaderboard. I stand to lose nothing. I'm still C ranked or D. I don't even know because I didn't care. But like the his reward for being a top ten player in the world is just like GG. I hope you like that kit forever. Yep. And that just feels that doesn't feel like the right thing, right? Yeah, no. I I literally I switched. I sw I even me. I switched, and for six and a half hours, I didn't win a game. Yeah, I did that for three hours. I couldn't. I couldn't take it after three. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that and that's I've done that three times. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I for six to ten hours with with the inability to win a game. Now, again, people can say skill issue. Yeah, but you put me against yeah. five thousand Elo players, and I go six and four in a match. Yeah, and I'm like a competent team member. Again, I'm the worst person on the team, but <laughs> but you can hold your own. Yeah, and here I am with a fifty percent win rate at sixteen hundred ARP. So how meaningful is your ARP, bro, when... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so that feels like a... I like that. That feels like an yeah. elegant solution that's workable. Um, now, real quick, I in preparation for this whole thing, I wanted to get Nikita's perspective because I had asked... You know, you get enough people that were basically like, Tarkov, competitive, eSport, hardcore, realism, is yeah, supposed yeah. to be blah, 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 all this stuff, right? Yeah. And I'm like... All right, let's not go seven years without asking Nikita what his fucking vision is. Let's yeah. ask him right now. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. yeah. I, I was like, "What's your dream <laughs> vision for like an ideal, normal, casual player's day to day experience? Like, where do you okay. see them in arena playing the game? Like, what's the point?" Fascinating. Um, okay. And I'm gonna play that. And I asked him, and he said I could. I'm gonna play that now. Uh. Typical day to day, day to day arena player experience. So first of all, uh, the, the the general idea was to create something in between, uh, just uh, for player to have some fun. As I said, like many times, but uh, still, it's kind of I don't know, like kind of tool, I guess, or something to like to train. So arena designed as tr for training purposes. So you play arena, you train. Uh, to fight and everything, and you get good in the EFT eventually. So it's the first thing. Like so, f first type of player is just to play arena on a daily basis and get good in EFT. Uh, the second thing is for those who are struggling so hard in EFT and my, I maybe I don't know, don't like the uh, the gameplay. Like you lose everything kind of gameplay. 
he just want to have some fun with the with the mechanics of EFT. So this the, that's the game for him. So this is another type of player who wants to play the competitive shooters, like multiplayer shooters and everything. So it's the second one. The third one, I guess, something else. But most of all, like these two types, uh, the, we initially de designed everything around these two types of players. So it's mostly fun, of course. Like the arena gives you fun. That's, that's <laughs> the first reason. And uh, the second thing is you are getting trained, getting prepared for the EFT. So they designed to go together. Even if you can buy uh, the arena itself uh, like separately, it's still designed to be the whole game. The EFT and arena just to have like this combined experience and to add fun in the EFT mechanics, in the EFT like game itself. So something like that. Man. Tarkov not meant to be fun. Arena yeah. meant to be fun. Arena meant to be fun. He didn't say he didn't say the, the primary goal is hardcore fucking punishing realistic esport comp it's people who want to have fun with Tarkov mechanics and get better at the game. Yeah. Woof. Fuck everything else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that my solution addresses that in a way that you know it it makes the it makes the c competition fun. Yeah, it makes the progression fun. It makes the you know the thirty hours between point A and point B fun, and not just pain on on thirty hours until you realize that B was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't fun at all. So yeah, yeah. and and it's so funny because yeah, like that. Uh, what we talked about the first time we did a podcast after Arena came out was uh, the opposite of everything Nikita just said, where we were like, all the fun we are having is the circumstances that are happening, which is like we're gaming with friends, we're getting into fights quicker, we're doing that stuff, and all of our feedback that was preventing us from fun were the mechanics. It was like, I mm -hmm. feel like I can't switch my gear now. I'm running into people. The matchmaking seems scuffed. Not enough people are playing. We're running into the same, the same three squads over and over and over and over and over again. So, which is on one hand, kind of a good thing because you, you'd rather have a game that's fun in spite of bad mechanics than a game that's not fun, even with perfect mechanics, because that's a harder thing to change, right? It's hard to take a game that works mechanically well that nobody thinks is fun and make it fun. So you're you're halfway there by it's such a fun game, but the experience, the way these things are ordered, is 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 the main driver that's preventing me from fun. So it's just funny because like that, I mean, and, which is well, you understand this very well. That kind of puts you on the right track to, be, track to be like, okay, let's provide some feedback. We can switch some things around here and double up on the fun. The game is fun. The world you've built is fun. The experience of playing this game with my friends is fun. But we keep running into things that take that fun away. If we change these things around, then maybe the whole thing can be fun. <laughs> and be a good yeah. place to train and get better at, at Tarkov. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, 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 was, I was just honestly like, that's good. Happy with his yeah. response. Yeah. You know, because, uh, yeah, there's just like so much. Like, I haven't been up to date as to all the things he said at all the conventions. Yeah. And all the interviews, all the podcasts, and people are like, yeah, he said it's supposed to be the most serious esport, blah, blah, blah. And it's like the way I see it, I see it like CSGO in that, like, yeah. It's first and foremost, 99.8% of the player base are casual people yeah. having fun. Playing a comp it's a it's an inherently competitive yeah, game yeah 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 in a way that Tarkov isn't competitive yes you can you can avoid competition if you want in Tarkov um so it's it's an inherently competitive game yeah. and it's designed around that but ninety nine percent of the player base are casually having fun yeah not taking it mega seriously um that's so funny it's so true I don't you know I'm I'm I've never played Counter Strike. Not a single version of it in my entire life, right? Nor Valorant. So I'm out of the, uh, 
I'm out of the the concept. So I only so so I said this to say I only see these games as the competitive reputation that precedes them. But you're so right. Like there's maybe a thousand players <laughs> that play the game competitively, and the game is still breaking all time concurrent player records. Right. So those two things can't be adding up. Like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people that play Counter Strike every month are casual players. And so silver elite master yeah. three. So like creating an experience, you know, if the competitive side is to create hype so that other people can play your game, you know what I mean? It has to be fun for those people. And uh I, I imagine the, the same is. the esports is a way to promote the game. Yeah. And to have make money and to have fun yeah. like with cool events and stuff. It's not yeah, they don't make the game for the esports events. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, because that would be like that would be like basketball having different rules in the NBA versus playing with your friends. It's like it it's a fun it can be fun competitively, it can be fun casually, and then the competitive thing advertises the thing, right? And makes people want to do the thing. So yeah. yeah, uh it has to be accessible. So yeah, I mean that's fascinating. I mean it's fascinating he didn't say competitive esport a single time in the thing. It was get better at Tarkov and have fun. Like, you know, he didn't even say to compete and make millions of dollars or whatever. So yeah, I mean, yeah. that's just, that's fascinating. That's cool. That's uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, I've been thinking about arena a lot. I've been really excited to go back and play it. I've just been so, so deep in the Tarkov land, but that's, that's cool. I'm excited for the video and I hope that uh, they continue to support it and make changes and stuff like that. In addition to what they've done with the patch point 14 stuff. So Bro, I would put 10,000 hours into the arena that, like, I was talking about. Yeah. The arena that I see now with what I see coming, which is a lot of it is ambiguous. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe play it for another month. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For um, sure. Apparently, um, apparently in that podcast that they did on New Year's, Nikita said something about them attempting to uh, open up the linking of your main Tarkov account to your arena account in the first quarter of 2024. Um, that like, I didn't, that's fascinating because like I have so many questions then, right? Like that, I have so many questions, like same, it's, you know, that complicates. it complicates everything. And we still don't even know, like there's still, we don't know about the things we know about. And then we don't know about the things we don't know about, right? You're going to be able to transfer money, but money for what? Like, I don't know. Is it still bad? Are you still running out of money running the kits that you like? Because I thought that they addressed that. You know, we know for a fact, he said, you're going to be able to send your gear from Tarkov. Are you going to lose? So how, that, so how does that work with presets? With the whole, with the whole thing, the, like the the crux of the whole damn thing has been how the and matchmaking how works and how the presets work. Yeah, you know they just haven't talked about it since then. Yeah, and then we know about like finding presets in Tarkov that then unlock an arena. You know what I mean? So does that mean that like a Timmy could find the arena version of a red key card and just unlock a Risty Zabralo kit, even though he hasn't put in the XP? Like, what does that mean? So we don't even know about these things we know about. And then there's like, okay, well, does that mean you're going to open up unranked as well? Like, are you going to open up these other game modes? Lots of questions there. I definitely, I thought it was worth interesting. Um... Oh yeah, and then and then there was the whole thing that like a week ago or two weeks ago or whatever, when I was playing, apparently the rumor mill was like all the kits, the whole kit progression system that you're interacting with is meant for unranked. Yeah. And th there was that rumor. I don't know if that was ever confirmed, but it was like, we're testing the ranked system and we're testing the unranked kits and we just smashed it together into ranked. What the yeah. hell does that mean? And how does that then also influence... I don't know. You know what I mean? So yeah. So then, yeah. I mean, then the the end result there is like if you look at the actual rating screen, you're looking at like each one thousand ARP group has four kits, and like yeah. literally. So the first one, all of them are bad. All four of the next one are bad. Well, actually, the last one's okay. It's a Paca with an STM. Yeah. And fucking. But that's the tier two. One. <laughs> That's the tier two. Um, but that's where 
99% of the player, but like, this is the problem is that like most people are going to be sitting at like fucking 1400 exactly. ARP forever. So they're just only ever going to use those, those four terrible kits. Like, kits? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, that was another bit that was kind of like fucking seemed really weird to me or at least frustrating or at least depressing is that like, if you want to use this as a gateway drug and introduce new players to Tarkov, yeah, you are inherently forcing them to like use the most awkward janky shit. Yeah. That is just like, do you want to learn how to drive on the car without the steering wheel? Yeah. That you're, that you're steering with pliers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it seems, it seems like it weird. Would be, you you would want to give them an M for or or like a, a you know a decently modded ADAR with like an EOTech and twenty round mags of like eight five five. Yeah. yeah. Like a laser on the side. Yeah. You don't give them the AK without the dust cover and no stock and a forty five round mag of yeah. water balloons <laughs> without a muzzle brake and irons. Yeah. It just it's weird. And and the whole overlaying of like the, the 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 progression tree was for unranked, but the thing, but the ranking system and the ELO was for ranked and we're trying to test them at the same time, but without really clear communication on what is for what. Like that to me, just like if the point is beta, if the point is gathering information and feedback, it just like it, it it's like I'm making like for the party on Friday, I'm making chicken casserole and I'm making cake. So here's a slice of chicken breast with frosting on it. Can you give me feedback? It's like, yeah, it's gross. And what do you want feedback for? You can't combine yeah. those things. They're separate things. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I don't. I, we have another, oh, it's the Porsche with snow tires. Though. Oh, that, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, I just don't. What am I doing? What are we doing? Like, you know what I mean? So I don't and know. That's kind of also like a little bit slightly disheartening. And it, it's what made me like second guess making this video yeah. because it's like, I'm sure they've already been redesigning and tweaking and balancing things behind the scenes and have changes planned. I don't know about all of those. I'm about to propose changes to a system. I don't know. Like, yeah, there's so many moving parts. It's a moving target. We don't know what we're testing. And so like, I'm just worried that. Yeah. It, like I think the biggest likelihood of it failing, of my like idea failing to do anything, is if there's just already enough. If they've already redesigned seventeen yeah. new kits, they've already done a bunch of balancing to make the Alton and Risty kits a little bit better yeah. and whatever. It's like they've already put all the band aids all over the place, and here I am with like some gauze. Yeah, but but that may be true, but there will never be a better time, right? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like this this will be the part of Arena's history. It has the fewest band-aids. It may be one band-aid too many, and they might be like, ah, I wish you had made the video sooner, but you can't have. You know what I mean? And so it's like, shoot the shot, and there will never be less band-aids than there are right yeah. now. Um, it's, it's, it's whether or not I have any confidence that I'm too late. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I, I do. I do. But anyway, so that's Arena. I Honestly, I've been having so much fucking fun. I, I had the so most sick. fun. I had the most fun playing with the three or four of the top oh, 10 yeah. players against the other top players. And, and it's, it, there's, there's, it's a lot, dude. It's like sensory overload for me because I play solo. Yeah. You know, and, and literally the entire game is he's left. He's over there. There's like fucking five people all in comms. Like, Oh God, you know, like, yeah. but you know, I'm getting a little bit better with it and it's making me a better player playing against good people with good people. Yeah. 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 Playing Playing, starting up this new account, I have a list of like with check marks of the number of times where, and it's like in the first 10 games, 60% of them were filled with racist names, team killing and spawn. <laughs> there were zero, it took me 16 games to have one call out from a teammate. Yeah. Um, and they all play like bots. Nobody gives a fuck. And so yeah. it's like, it's I made the the metaphor earlier. It, I feel like it's there's parallels here, and this would be like a video essay talking about like matchmaking systems in different games and yeah. how like you can elo hell to where like with like education and like poverty and like economics yeah, around yeah. like around how like if you just grew up in mid in like a middle class fucking yeah. white neighborhood and you like have a college degree in literally anything, how you're that's like 
you have a tier four kit <laughs> and you played CSGO for a couple of years. So yeah. you can you can get out of that hell. Whereas if you didn't, you are stuck. Yeah. Being if you're new to Tarkov and you don't have any friends to play with, you're just you'll never get out of the racist, toxic bullshit, not fun hell. Damn, yeah. And that and that sucks for Tarkov and for Arena. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yep. Well, hopefully they figure it out. Dude, indeed. If I, you I'm reaching that one foot grabbing a drink, you keep talking. Oh my god, stalling. I hope he can still hear me because what I was going to say Oh, he's plugging it back in. What I was going to say was, is um, after like a few months of you going crazy in arena with like with some squads, like some people that you dude one day, then we'll hop into Tarkov and do duos. Because that was always the thing when you would hop in with like me and Seal or me and Desmond, you're just like not used to having call outs. You see a guy over there, you don't have to describe it. Your eyes go, he's over there and you would just shoot him. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like that now you'll be in that like squad mentality and we'll just dominate Tarkov. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I was like, I have no reason to, if they fix Arena, I have no reason to open Escape from Tarkov ever again. And I kind of get it. True and real. I, I kind of get it. I do. I do. It's just straight up. It's the best, but like, it really is what I loved about Tarkov was, yeah. when, it was when I'm like in Mark's room and I hear... Yeah, fucking three sets of foot, and I'm like, this is what I've been spending been training four hours for. Yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then it's like, you get one tap <laughs> through the wall from a guy you didn't hear, and it's like, fuck. You yeah. Know, at least it's like, which is why peak Veritas was like early labs because it was yep. like the Thunderdome. It was pretty quick queues. It was small maps. It was quick into PvP. The and, sound was good, and the sound was better. Yeah, and the and the recoil was better. I mean, not than it is now, but back in eleven seven versus like twelve, and so yeah, I get it. Um, and that sound in arena is worse than Tarkov, by the way. It's worse than Tarkov, dude. I was saying, I was saying, <laughs> yeah, it's poopoo caca. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think like I think I'll always have a place for the two. Like I'm the guy that just. I'm constantly getting in trouble, like, not in trouble. <laughs> I'm constantly being asked, like, towards the end of the wife, like, dude, why are you looting? Why are you, why are you, why are you doing this? And it's like, I don't know. It's just fun. Like, I, I don't think I could ever fully commit to, like, arena because I just love the, like, the finding the rare thing. Now, I, it's, it, that experience is kneecapped by the fact that I had 150 million rubles, thick cases full of gear. It was like, the fear was gone, but I still enjoyed the process of looting and 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 that experience of it. The 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 concept of like I'm taking something from you. Like you had a thermal, it's mine now. You know what I mean? And so Yep. Um <laughs> Oh shit. Wait, I, I had something super important that I think is like a relevant epiphany. Yeah. Um so it used to be back in the day for one or more reasons. You could have a scav and a fucking Makarov. Yeah. And you could take down the fast MT yeah. fort guy, you know, because of a million different things. Okay. Um the new so we don't have the armor hitboxes yet. Oh my god. You'll have to tell me all about it because I I've just heard literally I hear people, I love it, I hate it, it's bad, blah blah blah. I've heard, I've heard all sides. I, yeah, I we're gonna talk about that. hearing your take. That will change some of this stuff. You know, like when I'm sitting there shooting the guys with the wrist tees and whatever, and they're doing this, like, I'm like, oh, maybe that would have been an arm pitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Um, yeah. But I have have come to the conclude not not come to the conclusion, but I don't really remember. It's so hard to know because we went through so many phases. Yeah. If you were to ask me now, pre about tarkov um, a couple months ago before the new armor update okay maybe the last year of tarkov yeah um even actually the re the recoil makes it less bad if you were to ask me about the the how significant gear is years ago i would have said the better player will win you play smarter recently the last couple of years yeah i 
you know, I would have said one thing, but would have been told that that was pure cope and that I was wrong and I was just washed. Mm -hmm. Now playing arena and having, I so far I've got, I don't know, like 500 matches or something. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fights. Yeah, that's more fights than anyone that that people are gonna have this wipe. Yeah, an entire five hundred, five hundred matches. Let's assume each match is seven rounds. Seven. That's what five hundred, th three thousand five hundred large scale PvP fights because each round isn't a one v one. So thirty five hundred multi person PvP fights. Right. That's more than already. That's more than a lot of people. That's more than most people get this entire way. Yeah. And, and now and I'm convinced that the right dot chest armor and helmet is more significant than fucking 3000 ELO points. It's yeah. like literally you take a bot and you give them good gear. They're impossible to fight. Yeah. So you give a competent player good gear and they're in pot like the average player has yeah. no chance yeah whatsoever now the or maybe the armor system has made that better but for the last year or two <sighs> yeah my judging the last year or two that i literally have like ptsd out of my brain and also took like almost a year off yeah um knowing what we know in arena they never fucking stood a chance and yeah it's it's interesting because Tarkov, yeah. So I get what you're saying. So you, I get what you're saying. Tarkov is was such a different animal because I feel like most people would agree that the past year in Tarkov gear doesn't matter, and a lot of that, like the the difference in arena, right, is you don't get to choose your gear. You just get to choose your like life journey, right? I'm assault. I'm CQB. I'm whatever. I I think a lot of the stuff that shifted Tarkov into like nothing matters is the uh I'm gonna get in trouble for this. It's just like um like stuff like so the the past few wipes or the past wipe it was the SVT. It's like you can get a gun. It's just in a universe where there's a bullet that you can buy. This is an exaggeration. This isn't the AVT. But in a universe where at level one proper, there's a bullet that you can buy that's 99 pen and 99 damage. Mm -hmm. Gear's meaningless. Right? Just yeah. instantly. Like, like there's yep. no class nine armors. There's close. So, so if there's a scale and on one of the multiverses, proper sells a round that fits any gun that's 99 pen and 99 damage, and then the other side of the universe is every round in the game has one pen and one damage and Alton's and Zabralos are free. We were, over the years, progressively inching towards the proper universe where yep. just there were more guns and more really strong ammos available really cheap. And, and the justification from a lot of the players is that it's in a bad gun. Like the Vepper Hunter's not that good. It's not full auto. You know, the SVT is not that good. It's not full auto, even though the AVT was full auto. You can't mod it. You can't put scopes on it. But it was still, it's like, yeah, you're right. You can't put a scope on it. You can't, but it's still LPS at level one. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, you just can't defend against that. So, I think that was a lot of why Tarkov felt it, we had basically moved away. Gear doesn't matter. It just looks cool. And then. So how much, um, and, and this is me, because I'm trying to see things, especially, you know, I just played 21 matches at yeah. like 1500 ELO seeing, I mean, dude, there's no way to say it without sounding like a dick, but like the beginning, I mean, they're just bad, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's, I mean, it's like, it's totally reasonable. They, they these are like human beings with like jobs. Yeah, and exactly. Shit. They're well, like, maybe just know, got into Tarkov for the first time. Yeah, exactly. Or they're new to shooters, or yeah. you know, they're just getting used to the awkward movement. Maybe they're fucking keybinds, or but like, yeah, they don't know their ass from their elbow. No, if and, you can put me out on an ice hockey ring, and I'm objectively horrid at it. Right? I've just never yeah. done it before. Like, so if you think about what I, I don't know this. But assuming that, like, the average Tarkov player is closer to that than they are to you. Yeah. They 
aren't probably aren't the ones who are buying the SVT or the AVT from Prapor, loading it up and going and taking down Landmark when he's yeah. They're the ones that just have their scav gear that yeah. are hiding in a corner that you either never come across or you run up, see them, shoot them, go, what the fuck was he doing? Loot them and forget they existed. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. you're going to get one tapped by the guy who's probably average or slightly above average yeah. who might be playing slow, might be ratting. And so I just wonder, I wonder For how sure. much of that the, is uh, like... The survivorship bias is like a huge thing, right? Or the... Or the, the uh maybe the opposite of that in Tarkov, where it's like, you know, I could have played 100 raids, died 10 times, but nine of my 10 deaths were to SVTs. I feel like I died to SVTs all the time. But it's like, you survived 90 raids. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, maybe, maybe it's not bad as you think. So so that, so that I totally get that there's going to be that bias there. Yeah, maybe I plow down 11 Timmies and then die to the guy with the SVT, and I'm like, everybody's got SVTs. It's like, well, you just kill eight people with Berettas. You know what I mean? So yeah. there, there definitely might be some of that there. But what I think was happening in Tarkov was all of those people, because in Tarkov, in Arena, right, if you have a bad experience, you either choose not to play or you just power through until you get a better kit, right? Like, because you're always getting XP. In Tarkov, you get down to 300 rubles and you finally go, well, I'm just going to go watch it. You either stop playing or you go, I'm finally going to watch a YouTube video. And then all the YouTube videos say, go buy the SVT. So I think it pushes people into that if they decide to Probably. remain in the game. You know what I mean? It Probably, pushes people yeah. into that. To survive. You think about like there's like the like the one of the tier two kits is like the the AKS seventy four with it's got like a class three rig, yeah, forty five round mags filled with T. It's got a light. It's got a dot. Yeah, it's a neat little shorty gun. I think a lot of new players would be happy to have that. Yeah, I run up against someone who's not good at Tarkov, not very good. Yeah, and. In two games, I'll fight them 20 times, <laughs> yeah. and I win once. You think the average player has no chance yeah. when they yeah. run into someone like me with better gear. Yeah. There's just no shot. Yeah. So that makes me like, it just makes me, I, I don't know what the solution is. I'm not saying anything yeah. needs to happen, but no, I guess I, it's, I get me just, it's me just saying like, it's reality checking my <laughs> mentality from years ago that I think was wasn't necessarily unfair because the game was so different in 2000 so different yeah yeah um but, but i see what for you're so saying long, yeah i had the whole mindset of tarkov is you make it like you can make yeah. it if you're clever if you're skilled if you're smart and now it's like if you don't have the right gear and you're not yeah. extremely lucky yeah it's just agony yeah and, Always. and here's the thing. He, here's the tr the true thing is that this is we've had this conversation a hundred times. So I want to say first that I, I I see what you're saying and I agree. And I think that uh, the way you just put it helped it click for me. The reality check, because I think sometimes I uh, I don't know what the, what's the word. I, I think sometimes I am accidentally a little bit in my own bubble where, yeah, I, I agree. I was playing a very different game when I was new. When people come in, I'm like, man, you can be you can be effective with anything, right? Like, and maybe I'm maybe that's not so much the case anymore, or maybe or maybe whatever. But here's the thing, and, and here's the true rub, and and the reason why there's so much animosity in Tarkov. It's it's the rogue problem and the money problem we've talked about all the time. The rogues are simultaneously the hardest AI in the game and the easiest. At the same time, you just have to know three things. If you don't know it, you'll never know it because the game doesn't tell you those three things because the game doesn't want those three things to be in the game, but the game and put those logical. three things in the game and they're not logical. Making money. Making money is either the hardest thing to do or the easiest thing to do. Do you know these three things? And, and, that's, and this is it. We live in a world... Where the game says at level one traders, here's 800 different ammos, 40 different guns, 70 different armors, 30 different backpacks. And in that hodgepodge of stuff is the gear doesn't matter gun and bullet. And if you know it, you know it. And if you don't, you don't. And so if you had a friend that played Tarkov and he said, hey, level one traders, all you need to worry about is buying this gun. You have a different experience as that new player than the new player that doesn't have friends that play Tarkov that keeps going in with a Beretta. And he literally doesn't stand a chance. And this is the true problem and the source of all this animosity in the community is that the game doesn't really have a super... Um, 
vocalized opinion of where it wants you to start and how it wants you to progress. And it doesn't have a consistent representation of that in game with what it offers the player. You know what I mean? At level two traders, you can have the God bullets and the God guns that make all the gear irrelevant, or you could still really, really be struggling. You know what I mean? If your computer can run streets, you could be a millionaire by level two traders, or you could be poor because you can't run streets and you're not, you don't know the money runs. And so like that, I feel like that's it. It just comes back to that where the true like determination of if you're going to have a good time in Tarkov is just purely, do you know the, these weird, completely illogical fantasy rules to play by? And if you do, you have a great experience. And if you don't, you, I guess, I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, yep. so yeah. Um, but speaking of that, I mean, especially you were talking about the armor thing. I'm, I am re I've been thinking about that recently on if I think that would be like an amazing thing for arena or like a really bad one. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I can't tell. Um, so I've been obviously up to my eyes in the wipe, just grinding the wipe, leveling up and stuff like that. And I wanted to basically go through a lot of these features and just like do like a one week later debrief on them. Some of them we'll be able to talk about because like the recoil you've been playing with and stuff like that. But that we'll use that as our transition. The uh, the armor system is really, really fascinating, man. I will tell you, uh, uh, you know, like it was the thing that I was the most nervous about. We talked about that pretty much at length before the wipe happened where I was like, dude, this is going to be more complicated. It's going to be more frustrating and it's going to be blah, blah, blah. And boy, is, is it such a big thing? It's such, there's so many things that, um, get pulled into this. It's really hard to say, I think the ammo change is a good thing or a bad thing. So I will definitely say in some aspects, it served to do the opposite of what I thought and simplify the armor system because there are less there are less plates that are purchasable than armors in the game because they share plates like this is mm -hmm. a class five plate that can go in a gazelle it can go in a so what we used to have was for every armor in the game was another like thing you had to remember what's the durability of this armor what's it made out of how destructible is it what's its max points how repairable is it and all of those things would decide is the koran good is the gazelle bad bah, 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 bah. but now that it's there's just five different class five plates in the game it simplified that this is a good plate put it in any armor you want hmm. you know what i mean yeah. Put it in a Karasa. And and it's it's not that simple because then what what becomes the determining factor on if an armor is good is the soft armor underneath. So the difference yeah. between a Korund and a uh the uh what's like it called? Like 3M? No, what's it called? The other class 5 armor, the black one. Um God damn it. It'll someone in chat will say it. Uh, no, like this, the, it's basically the class five slick. It was like the black one. Anyways, Hexbrid? no, that's the class six slick, but I was trying to make a, a Corund. Is it like sleeveless? It's uh the HPC. Yep. The HPC plate. It's just basically black. It's a black slick. Yes. HPC. Oh my God. I couldn't. And the reason why I wanted to do that, because the difference between a Corund, which is class five, I was trying to do class five comparisons. Um, and the gazelle wouldn't work for what I'll, I'll be able to show you. The difference between a Corund now and an HPC, they both have class five plates. And by the way, of those class five plates, you can get like ceramic ones or air. So you can get class five plates that are classified as light armor and class five plates that are classified as heavy armor. There needs to be a lot of testing done on that. And I actually think in theory, I like that um, choice there. But for all intents and purposes, the difference between now a, a Corund and a um, HPC isn't the HPC is infinitely more repairable and the Koran sucks. It's not that the HPC has higher durability and the Koran has lower durability. The difference now is the soft armor underneath. The HPC doesn't have soft armor. It will, it only has a front and a back soft armor. So just below the plates okay. is class three or class two soft armor. Boom, boom. The Koran so is under the plates. It's under the plates. Yeah, I think. Oh, okay. So no, no, no. Does that not help like no, no, no. shock them? I think it I think it does. I think sorry. I was talking to Tower the other day. The soft armor in real life is under the plates. I think in Tarkov it represents as in front of the plates. Like you can get shot with buckshot 
and it'll do damage to your soft armor, but not the plate. Which is okay, good. Yeah. I think that's the better way to represent it in a video game. This is still all like this is complicated. I don't know. But now the difference is, but the Corund has class two neck and class two growing, groin and side plates, class two side mm -hmm. plates. And the Corund has slots. It doesn't come with them, but the Corund has slots for you to actually put side armor plates. There's new armor plates that are one by one. Hmm. So you can reinforce your side and then also have the si the the side armor. And so I want to know how many times people get shot and they're like my fucking side armor. Yes. Like dude, how Yeah, I, I don't know. It's the, it we're still trying to figure this out because like they added a bunch of new hitboxes. So like I died the other day and it literally said I died to my left calf. So it's broken up pretty decently. And uh, so because I know that like you get those ballistic glasses when they first came out. And yeah. I remember like ricocheting like one bullet once with them and being like, it was worth it. Yes, you know, and then yes. it never happened ever again. So it's like so I don't know. And chat maybe can tell me, is there if you if I got shot in the side where a side armor plate would be and I died, would it say chest comma side or thorax comma side? I don't think I've ever seen that, but it seems like that would be important. To basically let you know that, like, oh, I should have had side armor there, right? Like, that's... Next time you get shot, if that plate is damaged... Yeah. ...and you came close to dying, that's a, that's a way of knowing the opposite, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm not sure. But this is... I'm, I went way long on this point. The, the armor system is a lot, but one sliver of my concern was that it overcomplicates it. But I hadn't considered that by reducing the amount of armor types in the game to, like, fewer plates and then making those plates insertable into most armors, you actually kind of reverse it, and it's a little bit less complicated because then you can just remember, is this plate the one that proper four sells a good plate or a bad plate? If it's a good plate, then buy that plate and put it in whatever armor you want, right? And that takes some of that complicated burden of, like, what armor is good a little bit out of the equation, and is the armor is the armor you put it in, though, is that is that still, like, a really important... No. Well, well, yes. Yes and no. The only difference is the soft armor. So some class five armors have level two soft armor. Some class five armors have level three soft armor. And you could imagine with your knowledge, that difference could be pretty significant. Like class yeah. two soft armor may prevent you uh, from taking some buckshot rounds. Class three soft armor might tank a few PST GZHs out of a PP-19 or an MP5 before it starts damaging your plates. That's pretty yeah. valuable, right? So, like, so there is nuance to the armors, but it's not in the major armor protection it has. It's more in the soft armor. What, um, I've only seen level two and three soft armor. And then, but, but secondly, where is that soft armor? I've died two. I spawned in with fudge. I ran 10 meters. I heard Swojile 40 meters away and a, and a scab with a shotgun shot buckshot at me. And one pellet or two pellets, I guess, hit me in the neck and it was head comma throat. What's the pen of Magnum Buck? If I had a Corund on with neck armor, I don't die there. Right? So yeah. the soft armor can be basically as important or as unimportant as you want it to be. But the fact that that's the only real difference now between a lot of these armor plates, I don't know. I, basically, what I'm saying is I thought I'd hate it and I kind of like it. Um, okay. Now, the other side of that, and this is what people can't separate and which is under, under, justifiable from the community because they smashed this into the same update. I would have loved, 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 loved them to have added the armor update separate from the updated hitboxes so we could get feedback on this system first. You know what I mean? Because people are conflating it. People are saying, I hate the new armor thing because I keep dying to my armpit. And it's like, oh, man, but that's there's a lot to that. There's a lot. You know what I mean? The, the, the plate system, how the armor works. It's it's Can a lot separated. I feel like I almost feel like but, they were too closely but interrelated. That's the other thing, I would have loved it, but the more I think about separating it, the more I realize, like, oh man, but how would you do quantify how valuable the side plates were if you didn't know you got shot in the side or XYZ? So I or get it. it. I mean, that and the fact that like they're probably built on the same infrastructural changes yeah. around like these are zones and and like uh, like yeah. slots. Yeah. And, you know, 
But um, in my brain, I see them as different because I, so I so I really like a lot of the armor stuff. I like that. Um, I I I think it'll end up in in more diversity. You're not you'll see people in gazelles and Korans and Karasas. People have already put class six plates in Karasas. You know what I mean? Effectively making it like a class six plate in a Karasa is better than a slick. Because a Karasa has class two body armor on your neck, soft armor on your, your neck and your stomach. sides. Oh, and a slick what your, doesn't. What about your stomach? Uh, I can't remember. The Karasa might. But but does that make sense? So like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. already see how you have to subvert your own it expectations. Is still like, you know, 50 grand or whatever, or yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap to buy Karasa because it comes with class three plates in it. Then you can take those plates out and put class six plates in. So like I remember like the the last time I was playing unless I looted it, like I was never buying class five or six armor ever. I wasn't even really using it because it never felt like it, it never felt like it did much. It was always mega yeah. expensive. Like if I got a slick, like the slicks just sat there. Yeah. Um, you know, at least for the last couple of months I was playing, yeah. you know, it was like the rat rig w would keep me alive more than the slick. It felt yeah. like, especially when yeah. eating was seemed like it was 100%. at like an all time high. Um, so do you find that like more people and or yourself are well maybe not you because you I mean, you always had a lot of shit do you find that yeah. more people are running around with more like they're running around more armored more geared now because of that has it made it more cheap or accessible or no too early to tell i think it's made it more accessible um well yes and no because like and this is where it all cascades into each other because in addition to these things they've made in addition to the mechanical changes they've made, they've made balancing changes as well. Like, I think they are trying to reduce the total number of players that have unlimited access to class five and six armors, right? Mm -hmm. So they've made balancing changes. So it's like you have the mechanical changes. What would those have mechanical changes have done in the old system with the old economy? But what are they going to do in the new economy? So like some interesting things are like people are getting scamazed right now because class five and six plates are unable Do to you be even get the reference the skamaz reference no i've just been saying that for like months now because i have heard it it was an old hearthstone streamer oh, okay Maz. people have been getting scammed out the wazoo because you can't sell and they said this in the patch notes you can't sell class five or six plates on the fleet which i think is good yeah. but you can sell all plate carriers on the fleet so people are buying hex grids with no plates in them for 500,000 rubles because it's a hex grid. But it'll say, it'll tell you the durability because there's durability of the soft arm. It'll say 120 out of 120. But, but they did put, they BSG, to their credit, they put a new UI element next to the durability. It will say zero out of four. And that means zero, there are zero plates in this plates. out of four places you can put plates. And a lot of people are probably like, oh, I have an armor repair kit. So. Exactly. 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 So, um, so people are getting, but, but, but the, it, it opens up some really interesting things. Veritas, imagine this, right? You've got an, you know, what's a good class four armor that you like, you know, you've got a friggin' a Karasa. Let's say you got a Karasa and you find in a ground stash, a slick. You know, that has plates in it, right? Instead of like insurance frauding your Karasa or carrying the heavy weight out, in raid, what you can do right now Swap plates. is toss the Karasa on the ground, pull the class six plates out, put the class six plates in your Karasa, and now you've got an upgrade. You have the best of both worlds. That Karasa with class six plates is better than the slick with class six plates because it has yep. soft armor that covers other things. And you didn't have to then say, well, I need to leave this raid to get this slick back to my stash. You just bing, bang, boom, ba, bow. And then you just toss the slick. You insurance fraud those class three plates. You're going to get them back. Now you're super pumped for this raid. Like that kind of stuff is cool. Like it, it's, it's actually opening yeah. up some interesting... Same thing with insurance. So we, so we talked about building guns in raid for so long. So this long. is like building armor yes. in raid. Same thing. You get out of a fight and your armor's trashed. If you wipe a three man and you can hodgepodge, this guy's backplate is pristine. I'm going to swap my backplate insurance fraud. I'm going to put his backplate in my backplate. This guy's front plate isn't 100%, but it's better than mine. I'm insurance fraud my front plate. Take that front plate. And now you don't have to like, 
You don't have to carry everyone's armor out at 70 kilos because the armor carrier, the plate carrier, is cheap on the flea marketer from the traders. The plates yeah. were the expensive things. You insurance frauded yours, put better ones in. Like that kind I'm of stuff. I'm assuming the plates are the he the plates are the heavy part too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like you can take plates out, you can insurance fraud plates, you can repair your armor in raid via swapping out plates that are better. You know what I mean? So like the ways it made that a little bit more complicated are ways I love because it it gives me player choice in raid and be and I can like okay well I'm going to stay in this raid then I've insurance frauded what's important to me this armor is now still good enough yeah and I got what I wanted from these players and I didn't have to take three Gen fours and you know be eighty kilograms so, so have they so it's kind of cool. Has has the meta yet shifted? I remember this became a thing towards the end of when I like stopped playing. I'm positive like, the answer to your question will be yes. Everyone was bringing in like two extra fucking wristy face shields, and it was just like swapping it out. Yeah, like combat. I, I haven't seen a single person do that yet, but I'm positive the answer to that question will be yes. Here's the thing that we don't yet know, uh, and maybe people know this because I know like Pestley is like level 42 or whatever because he's been 24 seven. Here's what I don't yet know. What is the availability of class five and six plates from the traders? Um, because if I can just buy class six plates for, you know, they're like, oh, we don't do it for money. It's going to be a barter for a nice guy press pass or whatever. It's like, okay, well, then there's no reason not to do that. Once you have max strength, you pop a mule at the beginning of the raid and you've got extra plates. Now, like we said before, in order to swap those plates out, you have to throw your armor on the ground. So you're put in a vulnerable position. But I haven't seen yeah. people do that. I haven't seen people do that yet. But so I say all that to him, man. It's been fascinating. It's been cool to see some of the changes. And I, I was really excited to be kind of proven wrong that like, damn, this actually is kind of immersive as hell. You know what I mean? And, and but there's still a lot of things we don't know about. Like um, there's a lot of people that think there are bugs in the game where uh, bullets are like no regging against the armor. We had a raid where me and Velian loaded into the raid and he is, his AVS was not on him. And he like, I was like, bro, you didn't bring armor. He was like, yes, I did. I have an AVS. And I was like, you don't have it on you. And I didn't think to shoot him, but then he tossed it on the ground and picked it up and it was on him. Now I was like, that could just be a client side visual bug, or that could be like the most important bug in the game where the armor is not registered, is not loading in like it used to. Right. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I saw, I saw someone tweeting that they are like someone, a name I didn't recognize. Yeah. They were saying that like, big major issue like effectively saying like no bullets are penetrating everything's broken well and then like tower was like i mean, not, not not tower um no fam was like i tested all the things you said and none of that's true and i'm trying to like yeah. i've got my popcorn and i'm like no yeah i don't know this other name i'm like i'm wondering like it, did he actually test it is this like all but that's the thing it's really hard because there are so many factors and there are so many ways like because for anything there's like eight different bugs that could represent that could end in that same issue and those bugs are wildly different right like like yesterday i was playing with ann and i got shot i had a full class four armor i hadn't got shot at all that raid i was facing the scav that shot me and he one tapped me. I don't remember with what round, but it was, it was, it was a round with like 26 pen and I had a full class four armor and it said chest. So I thought maybe I got throated. It didn't say throat. It said thorax chest and he was standing in front of me. And I was like, okay, is the body thing that it says, is that wrong? Is there a bug that it, I, he did throat me, but he didn't chest me. Yep. Is it, is Maybe there, it was two bullets or three it, bullets. Was it two bullets and it only one? Did my armor not register? Because I hadn't taken damage that whole raid. So did my armor not register? Or was it a lucky pen and a fragment? Or did it hit me like if the if the uh, what what I haven't done testing on is you know what they said like you know the plates only cover the A zone. Did he hit me in the collarbone? The collarbone isn't protected by the plate, but the collarbone is in the hitbox, so it's just gonna say chest. I don't know. One of those things would be an intended thing. Four of those things are all possible bugs. And I don't know how to, I'm not just going to stand there, you know, with scavs, you know, I mean, some people do, right? Like air wings don't doing a ton of testing on this stuff, but there's some fascinating things here that, that are all at play. So I'm definitely not saying the system is perfect. So it was task four and you said 20 something pen. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but it was, it was something that shouldn't pen 
on the first. But maybe, yeah, like you said, it was a 1%, and I got the 1%. Yeah, I mean, it's less than 0.1%. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard to tell, right? Like, so I there are some things with the system. Now, the other thing, the other part of this that people are struggling with is the, ar the armpits, the head throats, the that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, and I'm torn on it because it feels really bad. You know what I mean? Like we've said before, like progression is always a big part of video games to progress up to an armor, you know, a good armor that maybe doesn't have a side play. Like the trooper armor now doesn't have any side plates or even any soft armor to just, you know, face the wrong direction and get, you know, so now it's TKO'd like 136. Had, yeah. Or like the one time you go out with the hex grid or like the wrist T and you get the M61 one tap and that felt bad. Now it's the scav with the toss. Now it's the one buckshot tap one tap, the T46 PS one tap, the uh, PSD GZH two tap. It's the it's like, it's like anything. If you're just face the wrong direction and that. And, and, oh, dude, I need to. I oh, see. I, I now I want to like go to Tarkov and test this because. I still see you got six rounds of a buckshot and you've got the guy who's a tank. And no matter what I do, I'm yeah. and I'm not. But and I wonder, it would be wild to me to hit like the Ford armor guy and see him crumple with a buckshot to like center mass. But that's the be thing incredible. is that like you're not wrong. You would shoot that guy 11 times and he wouldn't die. It would just like it's a luck thing. It's luck that but that's the thing. That's what I'm saying is that like. I or, have yet, it's just like, has there been a clip yet of somebody being like, ooh, chat, I'm going to aim for the armpit. Boom, one shot, dead. Like, like, is there a clip where it looked skill-based? I don't know. It just seems super luck-based. And to be honest with you, most of the people complaining about dying to armpit hitboxes, it's to scavs. Because scavs just have, as the crow flies, like, it's just, their vision is just like, bah, 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 bah. whereas... A, a PMC has freaking margin of error. If I see a dude and I swing, I'm going to maybe over swing, start my shot, oh, and then I'm having to correct. A scout's like, and yeah. then it's just the dice roll. Does he hit? Where does he hit? And if 8% of the time he hits you in the throat and you play 10 raids, like you're just, just going to die to a throat shot every 10 raids. So, so like, I feel like it the seems throat like, and the armpit, if those are, so is the, the armpit, like, is there something particular about that? Is is the armpit just thorax through a hole where there's yes. no, like, like, the, like the, the, the thing that never existed, the kill a helmet? Yes, slip? yes, it is that. It's 85 damage to your armpit and you're dead. It's your thorax. I want to know how, I need someone to paint on a PMC, like, show them, show me on the doll where Killa touched you in your armpit. Yeah, because, oh, dude, let me, let me send you this. Let me send you this. Because, um... <laughs> When, when now when I'm running around and I'm fucking spraying with the AKS 74 with like T ammo against the wrist T boys in arena and yeah. I see this whole thing bah, 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 yeah I'm thinking like oh my god maybe I, maybe I can drop them yeah which sucks for them it's good for me like every, on the, everything is always fucking bad when it's yeah. you which is yeah. like the fucking worst part but that's going to exacerbate the problem because if those animations it's going to exacerbate the problem because if those animations that that player is doing is just client side then on my client he's going to be shooting up I'm going to push down to the armpit but on the server he's not looking up I'm just pushing down away from the and it's going to be scuffed and so here's the thing here's I'm going to send you Airwings tweet. He did a little bit of testing. I think this is just like super limited testing, but his guess is that, dude, blessing and a curse. His guess is that the reason we're dying to hitbox, to armpit hitboxes so much, is the, uh, remember we told you in the patch notes, they shortened the arm hitbox? Mm -hmm. So he thinks that there are shots that on a scope would hit your arm. But it's pat, it's not, and it's going then depending on the trajectory, it's hitting your armpit. So it's like they made that change for this, but when you do this, you're you know, when you're aiming, your arms are up, and so if someone hits you in the arm and it's doesn't hit that hitbox, it goes straight to your armpit hitbox. So like Bro, the, the canted chicken wing bullshit is, yeah. is basically saying, armpit me, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was his tweet where he kind of showed a little bit of that, where like he was um that's yeah. what x.com oh, i know it is um so like the top one is where he was aiming when he took the shot 
So you've got like where his scope is pointing. You've got, you know, where the laser is pointing. And he basically, the red dot is the average of the two. You know what I mean? What am I looking at? Oh, okay. I Dude, between like the blue and yeah. the stone and the camo, I couldn't tell what the yeah, fuck it's I was weird. looking at. So he shoots that person right there, which means if the bullet goes where the optic went, it should be his arm. If the bullet goes where the laser is, it should be his arm. If the bullet goes where it's average between those two things, it should still be his arm. And that person died and, and he, you know, he posted that screenshot. It said left armpit. So he was like, hey, I haven't done a whole lot of testing here, but my guess is potentially the shrinking of the arm mm, hitbox yeah. could potentially be playing a factor into the so just just shots. looking at that and it, there's it's too many plugs and wires away for, for showing yeah uh i'll showing put the tweet now. in the chat um but looking at that my initial reaction is that red dot is too high it should go down like one and a half mil dots like to the like where it would be like six and a half, yeah, because of height over bore, not because of the laser dot. Like I, I, I see if how how far away is this person? I don't know. I, I wasn't there for the testing. I only saw the tweet. Oh, it looks like, like he's understand. in construction. He, he's probably not super far. Yeah, there's a good chance it literally was like it would have gone through like the flap of his shirt kind of thing. Yeah, where maybe it's not quite as drastic. Like, yeah, I don't think. And I think he was even saying I airwing is just but that's that's absolutely like plausible it, it's, it's somewhere in the average of all of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's a bug. So. So, yeah. So that's the thing. It's it, always the yeah. fucking or, or it's, it's just a huge bug. So. It's hard to interpret what's happening, but what is not hard to interpret is that it feels bad to die to an armpit shot or a throat shot. And that's okay. That's I'm not saying we need to get rid of those because it's always felt bad to die to head eyes, right? Like since you started Tarkov in 2017, it sucked sometimes when you brought in the Fast MT and the Zabralo and the Meta M4 and the dude Makarov'd you in the face. It's always felt bad. And that happy. bad feeling is part of what makes Tarkov good. So I'm not saying, but that bad feeling introduced with, I don't know... Here, here's the difference. <clears throat> you bring in the Fast MT, you bring in the Zabralo, you bring in the M4, and you're staring at a guy, and he shoots you in the face, and the game says, head eyes. You go, that sucks, but I understand it. Mm -hmm. What doesn't feel good is left thorax, he was on my right side. What? Or literal, it'll say I died to your butt hitbox. There's a butt cheek hitbox now when the guy was in front of you. It'll say like it's just like that's what feels bad. What feels the exit wound. What feels bad is get like we like we said the scav accuracy. They've a scav never has never missed a shot in its life. So when it just when it aimbot Swazile beams you three sixty no scopes you and hits you in the throat hitbox and you're like man if a player had shot at me there it's like the likelihood of that happening would have been so much less. So that's what feels bad. So so you know. I, as we've said many times on this podcast, the, the, the fact that a well-placed bullet can drop you is not a bad thing. It's a good part of Escape from Tarkov, but like that has to have limits. If Nikita yep. just made a change and said, if you don't kill a scav by the time he fires his first shot, it will head throat you 100% of the time now. You'd be like, this good mechanic of the game has crossed into a bad mechanic now because we've made these changes. So when you get the confusion around the hitboxes, when you get the confusion around, is the information the game telling me accurate? When you get the confusion around how these scavs are hitting so many shots, I think that's when people are saying, hey, maybe we're getting one tapped a little too much. Why the hell am I supposed to bring armor into the raid if it doesn't do anything, right? So, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, dude, it's so crazy, the dichotomy. Yeah. That, that, and, and, it, and it exists in arena yeah we have the everyone malding about the alton kit and then we have the alton guys malding about their kit yeah 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 yeah. it's it's never it's never For enough sure. you know it's like 
For sure. Ugh, it never feels good. <clears throat> For sure. But it just it just definitely like Yeah, it, it definitely has that uh like I, I'm I'm not saying that the frustration is misplaced. I'm saying I participate in that frustration. I've had a few raids where I'm like, man, I really feel like I was robbed of a good fight here, right? Or a good encounter. Um, and, and, and I don't know what to do to fix it. That's always been the, the, the you crux. Didn't, you didn't learn anything. The, that's always been the crux of it for me. You got a good kid on and you, and I run into a pistoling and I miss my shots and he hits his shot on my face. No matter how frustrated you are deep down, you know, you're like, I whiffed. I should have hit that shot. But, but I think that there's, I think that's, that's the core of it all is that there aren't too many times I die to one taps. There are too many times I die to one taps and I don't understand what happened. That's bad. And if through investigating that, we say, hey, people are getting one taps too many times. These changes will reduce that. Okay, I'm cool with that. If we say, oh, you should be getting one tapped about that many times, but these things need to be fixed so that you can understand what happened. That's okay too. But I think we can, I, I don't think it's a hot take to say it's objectively bad to just like have everything in the game be untrustworthy. And then just output a bunch of random stuff to you and be like, what happened here? You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> and then to kind of bring it home with the armor stuff on the other side of that, I, you asked this last week and I do feel like armor is more effective. Um, when, and, and as a binary I, I, between like when I was getting shot last wipe and when I'm getting shot in the thorax, this wipe, uh, because the effective durability of all the armors uh, did increase like it just uh, it just objectively did if uh, if a corund had 45 durability last wipe it has 90 now because the plates are both 45 they didn't split it in half the plates have 22 and a half the plates mm -hmm. both have 45 so i get shot in the back from a, by a guy with a with whatever ammo and i turn around i'm i'm chilling i'm good i can fight this guy and so and then i can replace my armor with his armor if i head tap him so a core run could be like super clutch now. Oh, so what you're saying is armor is twice as effective, but you're now twice as likely as to get one tap. one tap. Yeah. So it's exactly like, which is like I, I'm I'm joking. Yes. But like, but but wasn't my remember my like summary was like it feels like it's going to be no different time to kill. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. It's way more complicated. Yeah. Now, it sounds like, you know, it, even if that was the case, it sounds like it's more interesting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. more complicated, but still, it's just kind of funny that it's like... Yeah. Well, and the other thing that feels bad about it is that, like, you like it averages to the time to kill being the same, but that's the average. It means the time to kill is much longer and much shorter, which both feel weird. The average is the same, but you could be like, and then you die. Or you could be like, Bob, oh, I felt like I missed that shot. And he just falls over dead. I, hit see, him in the I, armpit. Feel like, I feel like that was my experience before everyone was talking about how they got one tapped all the time. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, why am I? Why is everyone just tanking eight billion fucking shots yeah. and I'm getting one? Tap? Well, here's the thing. New recoil, old armor. You wouldn't have felt that way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think new the new recoil means we're hitting more shots, which means like, you know. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be building the guns that I'm using in fucking arena. So yeah, yeah, I would, true, true. I would uh, I would actually yeah be, be hitting my shots but, because the good guns in arena feel fucking great, yeah. dude. That's enough about armor. The system is is I, I, I'm surprised and delighted to have been wrong about most of it. Things need to be tuned. There might be some potential bugs in the game and we're still not at end game enough yet to know how available class five and six armors are and that will really determine a lot of the stuff moving on to something else that we can both talk about is the recoil man i love it so much veritas i can't i love it so much i think the recoil is so good i think the recoil is so good um and and, and i think where i think the community i think Hmm. I think the recoil is so good. I think that some guns need to be tuned. Okay, let it be known. Hear ye, hear ye. Thus I saith unto thee, I don't think it's perfect. I've seen some clips. The HK looks kind of crazy, maybe a little beamy. 
But as we said last week, if every gun in the game feels 800% better and three guns in the game are overtuned, I'd rather live in that universe. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. So I think some guns need to be tuned. But I also think that um, a lot of the Tarkov community just has freaking Stockholm Syndrome, bro. Like the amount of times I've heard, dude, every gun is just a laser beam now. And then it's like... It's, just, it's, it's nonsense. It's Zero nonsense. Zero thought, copy, pasta, Reddit, Twitter, nothingness. It's like, nonsense. Like if you asked, if you could like truth serum and you were like, how long did you think w before you formulated their opinion? They'd say two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. Yeah. And I've spent two months of my life thinking yeah. about this all day, every day. Um, yeah. I, like to an unhealthy degree. Yeah. It's just like, just take a step back. Yeah. And think about because why, what, if, what, who, where, why. It's like, all you have to do is just like, tell me the more nuanced version of your opinion. Because if you say all guns are laser beam and I say, no, look at this. And I run into a hideout with a lightly modded AKM on full auto. And at 20 meters, it's it's relatively hard to keep shots. And then you say, well, the HK is overtuned. I go, Everything we just did was unnecessary. If your first message had been, I like the new recoil, but the AK is over, HK is overtuned, I would have been like, yep, you're right. Like, do you see how everything we just did? Do you see how when you say every gun and then I show you a one singular gun that's not a laser beam, your argument falls apart because you said every gun? Just say the guns you're talking about. The HK is overtuned. I agree. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, oh my God. I feel like I'm talking to a mirror right now. <laughs> yeah, which is... yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. You, you sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry so i so like i think so yeah i think a few guns may might be overtuned and maybe with all the attachments they're they're a little too beamy but like do it just they just feel so much better dude like i like i think a perfect so i'm an smg fiend this way but but a better example is like a lightly modded akm right a lightly modded AKM, full auto with a red dot at 38 meters, it's hard to keep all your shots on target. It, it doesn't your sight it. picture. You can see your goddamn enemy, which yeah. is a huge improvement, but it's hard to keep your shots on. But at the same time, that likely lightly modded AKM feels 1,000 percent better than it did last wipe. Because if I choose, if I have the forethought and say, this is a little bit too far for full auto, and with that, that, and I go, bop, 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 I'm cruising, bro. Yep. And that feels good. That gun is not at all a laser beam, but I feel so much more in control of what I'm doing here. If I'm panicking, and I'm, uh, I'm, uh, what's the opposite of rewarded? I'm analyzed. My brain is falling apart. I'm punished. penalized. I'm punished for panicking. If I'm panic and I and I full auto, wait, what? Spanked? <laughs> if I get spanked for uh for panicking and full autoing, right? Like then going back to what we just talked about of like, what can you learn from that? If he turns around and taps me, I go, I shouldn't have full auto there. You know what I mean? Like I go, ah, I shouldn't have full auto there. I should have just tapped him. I should have just tapped Dude, him. I love when I hold down mouse one arena and I'm like, I'm whiffing. I'm <laughs> whiffing. I'm whiffing. You know, it's not like I can't see what's happening. I mean, that still happens every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Because the blur is shit. But like when I'm whiffing, I know I'm whiffing and I'm yes. actively whiffing. And and like that feels that good. That feels so good. I can laugh at myself and not be mad at the game. Yep. Yep. The problem is, is to outside observers, they can't tell if every, if if the gun is doing not what you want it to do. Yeah, it looks like you're whiffing. Yeah, but yeah. There's a difference. But it used when to, you're to whiff to turn the for car to you. The right, yeah, yeah. It's like driving on ice when you're turning and nothing's happening. The, you, if you're in a passenger seat, you're not going to feel the subtle turn of the wheel and there's no reaction and you like heart drops. Yeah, they don't know that. That's what it feels like old yeah. school days. Yeah. So like, dude, it feels so good lightly modded m4s lightly modded ak's lightly modded like bigger guns 
SMGs, bro. I am I am going to be an SMG fiend. I am. It's just yeah. like I used SMGs so much beforehand, and I just like I went through so much of the actual physicalized cancer that was trying to semi-auto a scav with an MP7. It's my favorite gun in the game, and it was just unbelievable. And it's so good that I just can't stop using MP7s. They put it used to be quest locked. Maybe it still is, but I didn't feel like I unlocked it via quest. They put the MP5 SD on level two Peacekeeper. It's 473 USD. And literally just buy the MP5. There's two MP5 rails now. So that's nice because one of them is always sold out. Put yeah. any dot you want on it in the game and you're done, bro. No stocks, no suppressors, no handguards, no pistol grips. Get an MP5 SD, put whatever stock you want on it, and you're cruising. And that is a laser beam, and it should be because M882, which is all you can get, has 11 pen. So it's okay yeah. if it's a laser beam, right? Um, oh my God, it just feels so good, dude. The MP9 was atrocious before. The MP9 feels good now. The SR2M feels so good now. The MPX feels, dude. Dude, and, and I love the recoil so arena. much, dude. Out of nowhere in the last like 48 hours, suddenly it's MP7s, MP9s, and P90s, which like are, yeah. the, are like some of the off kits that are like dead ends that now people are yeah. going into that are like, yo, those look sick. Yeah, dude, they're so nice. Uh, the semi auto guns, like somebody mentioned in chat, the ADAR, dude, I got to the quest that's like spots or two, kill uh, 10 scavs on shoreline using an ADAR, a TX15, or an M4. And I was like, oh, I don't want to build out an M4. So I just, ADAR and I threw a flashlight on it and a and an Elcan Spectre, not even a Voodoo, an Elcan. Just like, oh my God, the SAG 545AK is like butter. It just, dude, it feels so good. And like, once again, some of the big guns might need to be tuned, but like I found in a in marked room uh a 308 MDR. And I put a I put a grip and a and a, I don't know I had a suppressor, a compensator, and a, and a red dot on it, and I took it into my hideout and Full autoing that was like, I never want to do that again. Like, I mean, it, as it should, it was like yeah. the second or third target. It was really hard. You only have 20 round mags anyway. It was really hard to keep all those shots on target. That gun felt much better in semi-auto. So I was like, so to me, once again, I haven't shot every single gun in the game, but like, to me, this is feeling exactly the curve you think you'd see. SMGs, small caliber, not a lot of damage, very low recoil. 308 MDR, humongous round, lots of damage, lots of recoil. Intuitive is the word you're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? So, like, um, feels great. Seen a lot of AUGs, a lot of G36s, like, build variety, dude. And, and here's the thing. Maybe you're right. If you're a hater, if you're a little gremlin, if you're typing away furiously right now, maybe end game this wipe will be four guns again. Maybe it'll be Mutant RD704, HK, M4. But once again, if there's no build variety in the early game, there's no build variety in the mid game, and there's no build variety in the, the late game, or there's build variety in the early game, there's build variety in the mid game, and there's no build variety in the end game, it's still a better universe! <laughs> like, yep. you know what I and, mean? Absolutely. And... That's not to say that the lack of build variety is it's not only recoil that is yeah, that correct. does that. There is like a there is a demand, especially if you're talking about streamers too, because a lot of people make their determination about what yeah what DV uh, dominates Tarkov based on what they see the top three streamers running. Yeah. There's like a, a demand, a market for like Hey, dude, are, have you tried the juice cannon? Hey, dude, can you try the meta HK? Hey, yeah. dude, like, so, you know, there's some of that there that has nothing to do with whether it's viable or not. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think Arena has proved. Yeah. Every gun, every gun is viable or at, I mean, not every gun, but like I'm, I'm getting owned by the G36s. Yeah. The, Augs, yeah. the guns the that were guns. memes because they were so yeah. bad. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. So it just it just feels good. And then there's definitely a leveling of the playing field that happens. It, it it was it the game used to feel very have and have not, man. Like it used to I used to empathize with the people that would come in two weeks in the wipe, they'd see me at level 42 and they'd be like, I don't want to play, dude. And it's like, I get it. Like, I just own you now. You know what I mean? But like 
get an ADAR. And what we're about to talk about is the ammo changes. Get an ADAR. You might find a 120 round box of 5.5A1. Like, you can own me now. Like, the playing field has leveled a little bit. Of course, that doesn't mean that anybody can get any kill with any gun. It doesn't mean gear doesn't matter and it doesn't mean skill doesn't matter. But it moved that needle for sure. Yep. It moved that needle. You know what I mean? The G36s and the AUGs were the guns you could get at level one and two Peacekeeper, and they were never used because they were so bad. But now you use an AUG against my modded M4, you might win. And you and you bought that AUG for a whole lot less than I built my M4 for, you know what I mean? So it's just like, mm -hmm. it. Uh, I'd love to see a universe where the meta this wipe was unmodded guns, G36s and AUGs that, you know, you, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, maybe the pendulum swings too far the other way. Hey, whatever, man. Like, I, Dude, I my favorite my favorite videos of mine were rolling through factory and labs with an RSAS. Yeah. Shorty, shorty loud RSAS with the the like the the, the tan M bus yeah. iron sight. Oh and just owning filling up thick item cases in labs, running in an iron sight RSAS, just going bah, 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 yeah. and just taking down raiders and competing with fucking thick yep. boys. Yep. So like Dude, so I think the recoil is great. Now, adjacent to that is the changes to ammo. We talked about that a little bit. We we knew very little about it last why, but we knew that they had moved a lot of stuff, right? Like M855 is the class is the level three peacekeeper round now. Mm -hmm. Um you know, five four five they moved around. 762, you can't buy T45 or PS until I think level three uh proper. Um, they really, really moved stuff around and that has had a lot of effects. A, they, you know, they actually did, uh, they actually put some of the stuff in game. So you can find 25 round boxes of AP 20. You can find 120 round boxes of 55A1. I found 40 round boxes of M61 or M80, as opposed to just finding a few miscellaneous rounds in, in a green container, right? Like, so that's nice. Um, and, uh, so that's been interesting because not only has it done things like increase the time to kill and, and stuff like that early wipe, but what it's also done is like proxy buffed other ammos. Nine millimeter feels good now, not because nine millimeter ammo got better, but because the available nine millimeter ammo isn't that far off of the available 762 or 545 ammo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's off by a scalable amount. It used to be like, this round has 7 pen, this round has 35. You'd be like, oh, okay, well, it doesn't matter that this round is being shot at 800 RPM. It's off by enough that, like, fire rate exactly. makes up for it. But now, if M8, you know, if PST has 20 pen, but what you can get for your 7.62 AK has 27 or 28, you're like, that's a pretty significant difference, but I'm hitting a lot more shots with this 20 pen round. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's once again, it's uh, kind of by proxy, uh, by proxy, um, supported build variety because, okay, well, I'll just use this gun then. This ammo is cheaper anyway or XYZ. So that's been cool. Now, we have seen a few things. Oh, also, and then they did stuff like, I always felt like they did 9 mil really dirty in the sense that, like, last wipe, I could buy, you know, 90 rounds of 5.5A1 from the trader. I could buy a lot of 5.6A1 from the trader. I could buy 120 rounds or 100 rounds of M80 from the trader, but only 90 rounds of AP 6.3 which yep. has 30 pen and that's three magazines, right? Like gross. And I think it was level four peacekeeper. And you can, and you can waste most of that on a one scav running and juking you a couple of times. Exactly. And you're like, fuck, I just exactly. wasted a third. Exactly. Yeah. Now you can't buy five, five, a one from the trader. You can't buy, you know, BP from the trader. But now at level three peacekeeper, you can buy 210 rounds of AP 6.3. So okay. like, so th basically I say that to say, once again, I don't think it's perfect, but they've made considerations in multiple directions, which is uncharacteristic of BSG. Normally they, they kind of cherry pick. They're like, people complain about this ammo. We're going to move this ammo. And everyone's like, yeah, but well, what about this ammo? This ammo, you know, yeah. we always talk about that. We're always like, why'd you do this to, uh, nine millimeter but you didn't do this to five five six why'd you do that to seven six two bp but not m80 so it's not all perfect but they actually made considerations in both directions i can't buy five five a one anymore but i can buy more not a ap 6.3 so that feels better that they're doing that now five five a one is craftable 
but it's you have to unlock that craft via a quest. And normally I don't like that because it ends up being just the same thing with more steps, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, because I just buy everything I want off the flea market, I craft it, and then I still end up with my, you know, trader reset of it. Um, and they do the same thing with 9 mil PBP. The probably other ammos, these are just the ones I know because, once again, I haven't progressed all the way through. 9 mil PBP, you can't buy. Well, you couldn't buy it, and then they allowed you to buy it after one of the quests, and then they now you can't buy it. Um, but you can craft it. The craft is unlocked via a quest, but I don't know. I don't remember what the 55A1 craft is, but the PBP craft is it's for 120 rounds of PBP, and it requires um, a set of tools that doesn't get consumed. It's like the ones that you know don't get consumed when you craft with it. 120 rounds of AP 6.3, a thermite, and four boxes of nails. So oh, it's like not it's not like that much better than AP. Ex so so, like. ex so here's the thing. So it's like okay, it caught it takes six and a half hours to craft. You get 120 rounds. Now we're in the realm here where it's like okay, it costs enough to craft that I don't know that I want to always be crafting it. Like it would be hard to craft thousands and thousands of rounds of it, right? Because you can only conceivably get one if you're at your computer all day, maybe two crafts going per day. Every time you're crafting it, you're giving up half of what you bought from that trader reset of AP 6.3. But yeah. it is maybe something that I'd want to I'd want to have a few hundred rounds on hand because maybe I'd want it in my first mag or maybe I'd want to top off with it. So in general, I don't like when they take high tier ammos off and then just put them as crafts, but it does seem like the crafts aren't so OP that they just become a new version of trader resets. Like yeah, you could yeah. really only conceivably get 240 rounds of PVP a day and it would take half of the PVP, the AP 6.3 that you bought. And this is in a gun yeah, that, that shoots really, 800 that rounds per minute. Like a perfect like a purpose built like i'm gonna do this thing i yeah. really want to min max yeah so i'm gonna craft to prepare yeah and so i don't know what the 55a1 craft oh okay here we go uh one green gunpowder one blue gunpowder 180 855 and in nine hours you get 120 55a1 so that craft is long it'd be hard to get two of those in a day you'd have to be around your computer for 18 hours or at least like awake. Um, and 855 is like expensive now. I guess it's not that once you get to level, I think three, it's like $2 around. So that's not bad. Um, but that is also not a craft that's like, yeah, I don't know. I still don't like it. I'm not saying I'm not justifying it. I, I in general, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not like in what I, how I feel about this is a con is a conflict of game design. It's, in my opinion, objectively cool and immersive and fits the aesthetic of this wasteland to craft yeah. the good ammo to find the things. But the detriments of the flea market, meaning I'm never worried about finding that green gunpowder powder, right? I just buy everything I need at the 855, the two gunpowders, and the, you know, the feeling of like, Okay, well, in order to get that craft, you have to do a high-level quest, which means casual players don't get the opportunity to do that craft. And the, like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I definitely don't think it's a perfect system. But once again, what I can say is they've at least made considerations. They made these crafts longer. They made them more expensive. So they're at least making considerations. Maybe they're not the considerations I would make, but at least we're moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens towards the end of the wipe. Uh, some things I think are just gone, gone. Like I uh, like uh, um, like seven six two BP. I haven't. I I don't think that unlock a quest. I don't think you can craft that. I don't think you can buy it. Like it's just gone, gone. But you can find it in raid. And so mm -hmm. it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the ammo economy changes. What about like the MAI AP. Same. Same. Yeah, I haven't seen. I found that, but I haven't seen any way to reliably get it. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've always thought more things like Sturm and stashes and stuff should be in the game where like, I don't necessarily want Sturman to have the best ammo in the game because when he shoots me once, he hits me three times and that's kind of lame. 
And a way to have him have that ammo without having him have that ammo is he's got a stash and you've got a chance to find good ammo in the stash, right? And if all of the bosses all spawned with a key on them that opens something somewhere on the map, well, then you're incentivizing engaging with, you know, the video game to then go searching for the thing. Or like we've said many, 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 many times before, you know, reserve a lot of those locked rooms should have chances to spawn good ammo because it's a goddamn military base and, you know, shoreline, you know, spawn more meds and stuff like that, like contextual stuff. That'd be kind of cool. But I don't know. At least they're moving in a, in a and I guess, kind of the right direction. Um, vaulting is unironically my favorite change of the wipe, even almost as much as the better than the recoil. It's just completely completely changed how I traverse the video game. It's the best. Oh, yeah, it's the best. I haven't even thought about. I literally only played Shoreline a few times, and like the new map, I so I never really vaulted much. Um, yeah, and it's still useless in arena. Yeah, but unfortunate. I, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, it's just so good, man. It's so many Are there a lot of No, go ahead. So many things that you can't jump over even with elite strength. A level 1 PMC can traverse now. And that feels good to me. I hated that. I've always hated how reliant movement was on strength and endurance. I still say in a universe where Jesse's president of BSG I still say that whatever stats you have at level 30 strength and 30 endurance, that's level one now. And the, the, you know, get, getting to, you know, the, instead of one to 50, it's 30 becomes one. And now the space between 30 and 50 is one and 50. Sure. You want to level strength and endurance. Cool. The more you play, the, the higher you can jump. Cool. It, the Delta is too damn big, but as a way that has felt a way that felt good, a way that's given me that feeling is vaulting because not only can like uh, I climb up onto things, I can vault over things. And because those things take hand stamina, I have a perception of having higher endurance because if I run my full stamina yeah. bar out and jump over two things, 48% of my stamina was consumed by those two jumps. Yep. Now, if I'm running and I vault over two things, that only took hand stamina. So there's mm -hmm. a perception of higher strength and higher endurance because I can get over more things and I can run farther. I it's still so... want there to be less reliant on skills, but I'm not present. Dude, it's so funny how, like, I have level three endurance, level one strength. I'm level 41 in arena. And at no point have I once thought about endurance or strength. Yeah. I've never run out of endurance. Yeah. Like, Yep. And that's when, like, you spawn in, you sprint, like, for a while. I mean, it's not, like, yep. shoreline to resort, you know what I mean? But, like, um, Dude. So I, I almost feel like the skills are kind of fucking pointless in Arena. Like, Yeah, I mean, so far, like, if you've done 500 matches, you're level 41 in Arena, and you have level 3 strength and level 2 endurance, they are not kind of. They're for sure useful. <laughs> I'm not like, what benefit like, is even, it giving you? But even, yeah, but even if it did... Even if, yeah. you know, if you had like, max I'm, I'm strength not, tomorrow, you wouldn't notice. It would change the game. I mean, yeah. there is a possibility that maybe max strength, because I mean, we're not picking up things, we're not looting things, but like maybe that means you could get to the tower two seconds earlier yeah. than the other guy. You'd be throwing grenades out of the map. <laughs> the maps are so small. Yeah. I mean, I just don't, yeah. I just don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be meaningful, but I, yeah. I think I still think that uh like the 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 weight system needs to be tuned um like they're uh in a lot of ways they incentivize you to like especially nowadays they don't want you just running around like SR25s right or RSSs because those are like those are guns that by definition are just really good at just about everything close quarters if you spam fire it you're shooting a big round so if you hit shots they're going to die and you can put an optic on it and reach out to 5 600 meters so, you know, with a lot of the quests, the whole Tarkov shooter quest line is all bolties. They switch shooter born in heaven to bolties. You know, it's hard to get our sasses and SR 25s, but running a PP 19 and a Mosin means if I pick up a feather, I'm overweight and I'm huffing and puffing the rest of the rate. So it's like, yeah, this goes back to the conflict of design. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to make a really immersive RPG where you're like, man, back when I had level one strength, I couldn't wield this sword. And now that I have 50 strength, or are you trying to make an immersive, intuitive experience? Because 
I feel like I could carry a Mosin and a PP-19. And then, like, I brought a backpack in. I'm not going to put anything in it if I'm yeah. too heavy already. You know what I mean? So, like, I still think some of that needs to be adjusted. But, like, overall, it's been net positive. Huge W for movement as a result of vaulting. Uh, and I just am so surprised with how well it's implemented. Uh, once you understand it, once you get some of the quirks of, like, okay, you can't climb onto a thing in a full sprint. So when you're sprinting up to a ledge, you let you got to back off your sprint right as you're approaching it. And then you hold your vault key and you seamlessly climb it. If you're yeah, vault these are the weird, specific, arbitrary movement skills that Tarkov players have. Yeah. Out, the WASD circular. Fucking yeah, train, yeah. All that bullshit that like doesn't translate to any other game. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If you're like if you're going to vault over something like a fence, keep your sprint. You'll vault right over it. Uh, I pulled my vault key off spacebar. We talked about this last week. So now my jump has no input delay. I'm not going to vault when I'm trying to jump. I'm not going to jump when I'm trying to vault. It all happens how I want it to happen. And as you, it's really fluid. Uh, very rarely am I like running into something being like, oh, I, I'm, I'm trying to vault. Okay, I get up it. I was doing that a lot day one. But like now it's like, man, you can really learn this system. And I'm going to do that now. You have it set to V, right? Yeah, I was at the V. V and then you go back to your jump and put it on press instead of release. Yeah, jump space release. Yeah. Yeah, every now and then I try to do the fucking if I'm like trying to meme for a kill cam or whatever, yeah. and I try to do like a little hop and I like turn and then press space bar and then just like don't jump. Yep, yep. Just look like a bot. Yep. Yep. Uh left <clears throat> shoulder shooting seems super viable as well. Like that's it seems like a thing. You I, actually... I love the way it looks, dude. Like yeah. it's, it's like instantly feels more. I think there was like a clip where they, I don't know if they did some fucking CGI or whatever in yeah. one of the trailers, but like it looked like the camera was on the side of the helmet. And oh you saw yeah. It. Yeah. What it looks like, and I love just like not aiming, but like just point fire yeah. around a corner. It just feels really fucking good. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to talk about with the vaulting. There is, as to be expected, a lot of bugs. <laughs> like, you can vault into almost every locked shoreline room from the balcony. You just vault through the wall. Uh, you can vault into the marked room on streets and then vault through the floor to the floor above you out of the marked room on streets. It's uh, Yeah, yeah there's... um. I'll talk about it in the future. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that to me, like that kind of stuff, vaulting, like vaulting into the shoreline resort stuff. It's like, yes, that is a bug. They need to address that. But it's like, dude, whatever. Like, it, like for how smooth vaulting came into the game, I'd much rather have the bug be. Uh, you can vault into the shoreline resort rooms. Then the bug be when you vault you get stuck in the floor or mm -hmm. like you, or you teleport back in time, right? It's like, okay, if Johnny finds a Ledex that he wasn't going to find, whatever, if I can move around the map as opposed to like actually. So do they need to fix those bugs? Absolutely. And they could probably, there's probably some like cheat codes that they could do where it's like, okay, well for now we're just going to put invisible walls here. Because like a lot of those shoreline resort things, those are doors that don't open. So you should yeah. cause conceivably with no way. So they should put an invisible wall there, then whatever. Same thing with the marked room, right? They should put an invisible wall, a wall in those windows. Boom. Literally nobody can do that again and they don't have to tweak vaulting. So like I hope that they do something like that in the meantime to just like they can just block these things super quickly. Um, you know what you know, blew my mind the other day uh, when I was spectating a dead teammate and uh, was, you know, on bowl inside the helicopter yeah there's a loft in the back there you can vault up in there and it's like a big fucking area with like a net that you can like i i don't know how nobody saw it for 500 games until one day i'm like where the fuck is this guy what and i've never seen anybody there i've never i i've tried to get up there and i can't i'm sure there's like a specific yeah 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 but That's there's literally crazy. It's clear as day. like if you were in there and you just look uh, the I can't is, picture it. Yeah. There's a bunch of boxes and then there's like a full on, there's some way to get up there. And uh, that's but I remember, so funny, dude. It's one of those things that's going to be like a one and done spot where 
you know, you're like holding in the heli. The guy comes in, clears, doesn't see anything, and you kill him, and he'll be like, "What the fuck?" You know? And, yeah. And then everyone and will start there again for the rest up. of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's super funny. Um. But uh. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, that the the patch feels really good. Um, the uh, everything, yeah, just like there are bugs, there are frustrations, there are things that need to be addressed. But like, you know, uh, I buddy texted me a, a joke, and the 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 core of the joke was you can tell the health of the Tarkov community about what they're arguing about, and it's like. We're all arguing, but like the stuff we're arguing about makes me smile. You know what I mean? It's like we've there's been some rough times in Tarkov, and we're always gonna be arguing. But it's like, dude, I'll take this. So it's not as good. It's not as good as when the biggest problem the game faced was hatchlings. Yeah, that was the biggest. That was the cancer ruining the game. Yeah, those were the days. But now, I. Yeah. I yeah. I so, think uh, I think everything's in a. In a, in a, I don't want to say it's in a good place. Like we can, yeah. There's still work. I don't to want do, to leave it. Yeah, but it was. But we're on a fucking massive upward trajectory. Massive that, upward trajectory that could at any point completely fucking dive bomb. As it has if, before. If, if, if Nikita's like, we heard your, we heard your feedback from 17 Reddit posts, and we've nerfed the recoil, and then it feels like dog shit again. Yeah. You yeah. know. Um. But. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, we'll so, uh, so yeah, definitely upward trajectory. I'm, I'm definitely in that spot though, where like, uh, I really just hate questing <laughs> and leveling up. You know what I mean? So like, I'm just kind of like sludging through just, just going to get enough done to get max traders and like get some unlocks that I want. Like, and I don't, I don't even think I'm going to go for, um, light keeper this wipe it's just like i just want to get to the point where i'm like playing the game you know what i mean and having fun and enjoying it so and i'm super excited for that oh last thing bro the btr on streets is the coolest thing ever dude and by the way like I mean, i've heard nothing but good stuff i think i told you about how like i was a scav and i found a quest item and i found fifty thousand rubles and then we took it yeah. we took it over okay the only negative experience i've had is um uh okay so found in raid ledex very important right you need that one for private clinic obviously it's just nice even if you don't need it because you can sell it for a lot of money but though you need one find in raid ledex for private clinic you get your thick items case right so i was on streets and it was set up for the most immersive experience ever dude i was on streets i find a ledex in a just med box boom oh Oh, dude, throw it in my gamma container. I'm like, yo, this is sick. I need this Lettuce. I need this Lettuce. I need this Lettuce. We hear it. We're like, yo, let's take the, let's get the BTR. Take it, pay for it to get it out. I was like, oh, sick. So we're like, where is it? So we run over there and we find it. So it sits for a certain amount of time, like a minute. And no matter what happens, when that count countdown goes down, it's leaving. So we get there. I'm like, yo, this is sick. I get in and I'm scrolling through the menus and it just kicks me out and it drives away. We just got there late. And I was like, no. And so we like, we're like, all right, fine. It's fucking ice cream. Doo, 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 yeah, yeah. Doo, doo. You're like running out with the quarters. Like, no. no, exactly. So we were like, Vel's like, well, we'll go loot over this and then we'll go find it at its next stop. And I was like, okay. So then we went and we killed some scabs. We looted it. And then we, we were like, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. So I ran up. I get back in and I'm like, okay, transfer loot to stash and you drag stuff over, right? And I dragged the Ledex over and it was 144,000 rubles just to send the Ledex to my stash. Oh. I had, I had 22,000 rubles on me for the car, right? I was like... Take it, take it out of your stash. Take I, it, put it on my tab. Put it Fuck on my off, tab, dude. Boss. I was like... What? I what what I did first was I had a defib, a found in raid lion, and a Letex. I put it all in. It was 270k. I was like, uh, so then I took the lion and the defib out, and it was 144k. And I was like, wait, I mean, maybe I'll try and get the defib. It kicked me out. It moved again. I was like, God damn it, dude. Oh no. So like the thing is the coolest thing. I want I want it expanded, but like I was like. I almost messaged Apple immediately and was like, 
This is the literal textbook definition of the perfect BTR experience. I found a thing. It was close. I had cash on me. I ran to it. I was going to stay in the raid. I wasn't going to leave the raid. And every part of this thing told me, no, you can't do it. Like when you get in, when somebody gets in, That's bad. if it's going to leave in three seconds and it lets you in, it should buffer 30 seconds and then let you know with a countdown. Like, okay, you got, you know, you got 30 more seconds and I'm leaving to prevent that where you just get in and kicks you out. And then I was like, yeah. dude, either credit this to my stash or this can't be. Now they did increase how much rubles you can bring in raid. It used to be like 100,000 rubles. Now it's like 300,000 or 400,000. But it just feels weird to like, I'm going straights. I'm going to put half a mil in my secure container in case I find something cool. It's like, just credit it for my stash, man. Like, I mean, e e even if, if anything, make it so that like, another way of doing it is it's almost like an insurance claim that you have to claim back at your stash. Yeah. And you transfer rubles then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once like, you leave. It, yeah. They can't do it automatically. Just like when you're in the menu, you know, like something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. There should be no reason why bring like bringing cash. Is yeah. So I was like, lame. I was like, dude, this is so. Is this is so close? This was so close to the perfect experience because then we were gonna stay in the raid forever, right? It's like, oh, cool, I got my final raid Lennox out. Let's leave. But then after that second time, it's like, all right, I guess we just get out with the fountain raid Lennox. You know what I mean? So, um, but the uh. The freaking BTR is sick. Other than that bad experience. Make make the stuff cheaper. Um, or or don't make it cheaper, but just let me pay for it from a stash, right? Like, I guess that makes sense, right? If I want the Founder Red Lettuce, I'm going to eat some of the cost of it if he's going to take it out and give it back to me. But let debit it from my stash, please. Um, anyways, uh, game is good. Game's in a good spot. Drops have been going on. I saw you played Arena most of your drops today, which is sick. Awesome that you were able to do that. Um, so what I'm doing. I got drops in 22 hours. That's oh, 6 yeah. AM to 6 a.m. slots gonna be fucking terrible. It was. And if a doctor's appointment at 9 a.m., I'm gonna show up to the doctor's appointment. You're be like, are you dying? Yeah. I <laughs> mine are mine are tomorrow at 6 a.m. <sighs> yeah. I had the you. Yeah, you rated me. I had the 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and I was, dude, I was rough. It was big rough for me. I almost stopped and then fudge hit me up he was like yo my sleep schedule's messed up i'm playing you want to play i was like yeah sure and then we died every raid for three hours it was like brutal and a couple of years ago we did 24 hour streams like it was nothing dude, dude. i'm getting old 12 hour streams hit different dude. when well 12 hours 12 hour streams going through the night i'm such a baby when it comes to sleep man like i'm stressing about having to wake up at 5 a.m to go live tomorrow like i am such a baby I did an 18 hour stream the day arena dropped. I did an 18 hour stream the day Tark the wipe dropped. Like that's, it's not a problem. It's just, am I doing it during normal human hours or am I attempting to just magically be nocturnal all of a sudden? That's it fucks you. It fucks you up for us all like 48 hours. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, dude, it just feels num, 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 num. It feels so good to just like have good things to say about arena, about Tarkov, like things, you know, it's like, and that's what you're saying. You don't want to say it's in a good spot because you don't want the perception to be like, oh, cool, we're done. It's like, we're moving in the right direction. Let's keep working on this arena stuff. Let's get the matchmaking in a better spot. Let's keep working on the Tarkov stuff. Like, like I've been, I was thinking about that. I was like, I was like, imagine the Tarkov today with the adrenaline system because a bunch of adjacent systems now feel so good. I was like, that would feel, it would make it feel even better. So it's like adrenaline plus remove the blur dude, plus, plus uh, vaulting uh, plus less aim punch. Like it would just be the best. So, uh, but it's awesome, man. The game feels good and I am excited about it. So, uh, thank you guys for hanging. Thank you for being with us. Um, as always, uh, we are sorry that the, the there was no PP this week. It was a combination of uh, the new year. Drops. It drops. Literally, we normally do them on Mondays. You had drops Monday morning. I had drops Monday night. It was just like, it was kind of scuffed. But we have like two or three more days of drops. Both of ours are tomorrow. So by next week, we'll be basically right 100% back on schedule. Um, but if uh, that being said, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the PP and you want more podcast content, you can go to patreon.com slash the podcast pod and... Uh, Get the PP, which is an extra episode every week. You can get early access to these episodes. It's pretty dope. 
thank you guys so much for hanging. We appreciate you. And we will definitely see you on the next one. Smart Elite.